from Philadelphia, NBC Sports presents Game 1 of the 1980 World Series. The American League champions, the Kansas City Royals, versus the National League champions, the Philadelphia Phillies. Brought to you by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. And by Ford and your local Ford dealer, who invite you to test drive the new 1981 Ford cars and trucks. And by Gillette Extra, the pivoting head razor. The pivot makes it better. And by Pepsi Cola and your local Pepsi Cola bottler, who invite you to catch that Pepsi spirit. Stadium on a cool, crisp night. 48 degrees of temperature at game time. Some 65,000 wild fans jammed in here, and they are ready. And they're wondering, are the Phillies ready? Hi, everybody. I'm Joe Garagiola. And the big question seems to be, are the Phillies worn out from the battle they had to wage to get here? Are the Kansas City Royals too rested? Well, as far as I'm concerned, in a World Series, that's really not a factor. It always boils down to hitting Pitching, defense, and speed. Well, we have with us this year Tom Seaver, the Cincinnati Reds in the booth, and let's ask Tom about the pitching. Well, Joe, I think the key to the pitching, if Kansas City comes in here and can set up the pitching exactly the way they want to, they have Dennis Leonard going, they are best pitcher, and behind them, behind him, they have a very strong bullpen. The Phillies, on the other hand, are starting Bob Walk, really their number five pitcher, and after the games in the Astrodome, a very tired bullpen. So I think going into game one, pitching-wise, Kansas City has a distinct advantage. All right, and my sidekick, Tony Kubek, will be here as always. Tony, how about you, your thoughts? Well, just a couple of observations, Joe. It'll be the first time in World Series history, two rookie managers, Dallas Green of the Phillies, and, of course, Jim Fry of the Royals. First time ever, artificial service all over the field. Every World Series game will be played that way. We've got a D8 this year, but I think a key might be the speed. Both teams with excellent speed. We could see a lot of extra base hits. I really think it's going to be a high-scoring World Series, and the team that uses that speed most aggressively, defensively, and at the plate and on the bases might end up with the World's Championship ring, the first for either team. Okay, Tony. Well, we made a case for both ball clubs, but I think there's a great baseball line that really covers the subject, and it goes something like this, that the expected is always happening when it's least expected, and vice versa. And now let's meet the players. Let's go to the PA announcer, Dan Baker. McRae, the designated hitter. And batting third with a 390 average. There he is, George Brett. In the cleanup spot. It'll be Willie Mays Akins. Daryl Porter will be the catcher. He's batting fifth. Batting sixth, Amos Sotis. He'll be in center field.
Batting seventh, right fielder, Clint Hurdle. Batting eighth, the second baseman, Frank White. And batting ninth, the shortstop, UL Washington, the starting lineup for the Kansas City Royals. And there you see the pitcher, Dennis Leonard, who won 20 games and lost 11 in 1980. Introductions having been made, the manager, Jim Fry, rookie manager, came over from the Baltimore Orioles. How do you like that? Didn't get introduced. They got him right now. Okay, that makes it official. You may see him again. Batting eighth, Larry Boa. He'll be a shortstop. Batting ninth, the catcher, Bob Boone. was the Phillies' third selection in the June 1976 secondary phase of the draft. He won 11 and lost seven. Did not appear in the playoffs with Houston. He is the only rested one, Bob Walk. Dallas Green, the manager, being introduced now. Now we'll have the all Philadelphia boy 
Boys Choir and our national anthem. Philadelphia Boys Choir and Men's Chorale, under the direction of Dr. Robert Hamilton, honors America by singing our national anthem. German engineers, Japanese engineers, American engineers. Introducing a world car, the new Ford Escort, built in America with better ideas from around the world. Higher gas mileage ratings than Rabbit, Accord, Corolla hatchback, yet roomier inside. With four-wheel independent suspension, front-wheel drive, Ford Escort, built in America to take on the world. Take it easy. You know, I was known for working long and hard during training camp. Why, even after my teammates were asleep, I'd still be out practicing my moves, and that's still important. So I drink light beer from Miller. Light tastes great. It's got a third less calories than a regular beer, and the best thing is it's less filling. Because, listen, I still train the same way as the old days. Practice, practice, practice. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. One, two, three, four, five. Trouble spots like these are what separate Gillette Atro from all ordinary razors. The reason? The Atro pivot. It keeps the blades at a perfect shaving angle, giving you a better shave than any razor that can't pivot. One, two, three, four, five. How many more reasons do you need? Gillette Atro, the pivot makes it better. Gillette, when it comes to shaving, we give you the edge. The Baseball Hall of Fame. On September 27th, these 12 youngsters traveled to historic Cooperstown, New York to compete in the national finals of pitch, hit, and run, Major League Baseball's official youth program. They took time out from the action to visit the stars of the past. Now, the names of these youngsters will be added to the pitch, hit, and run plaque displayed in the Hall of Fame. Pitch, hit, and run. The dream comes true. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Welcome back to Veterans Stadium here in Philadelphia. Beautiful scene. A cool, crisp night, and these fans are ready. The last time they had a World Series here, it was 1950. The Whiz Kids, and throwing out the first ball, the manager, Eddie Sawyer. And there he is. Sawyer and the gentleman in the blue hat next to him is former commissioner of baseball, A.B. Happy Chandler. And there go the Phillies.
take a look at the defensive setup behind Bob Walk. The pitcher Lonnie Smith playing in left field. That's been a problem area for the Phillies. Maddox is in center field. Gary Maddox, Big McBride in right. Mike Schmidt, the third baseman. Larry Boa, the shortstop. Manny Trio, what a championship series he had. He was the MVP for the National League. Pete Rose at first. Bob Boone with those tired, aching knees behind the plate. And Bob Walk, the pitcher for the Phillies. What about Bob Walk, Tom? Well, Joe, Bob Walk, and uh... that's the lineup he'll be looking at. Willie Wilson, McBray, Brett, Aikens, Porter, Otis, Hurdle, White, Washington. A lot of left-hand hitters. Walk in 27 starts, Joe, was 11 and 7 with a high 4.56 ERA. He had just two complete games as a rookie. Six foot three, 200 pounds, just 23 years old. When he came up in the middle of the season, he did an outstanding job for the Phillies and then had a little trouble going down in the last month. The last starts, really, he just pitched 12 days ago and pitched fairly well, but that's really the only good start that he had going down the last month. He pitched seven and a third innings, just gave up one run against the Cubs. You'll see a, an outstanding fastball from him, very good slider, and an occasional curveball. Doesn't change too much. He'll come right at you. Like many of these young pitchers on this Philly staff, the young pitchers that really were tutored by Dallas Green in the minor leagues will come at you with hard stuff. They won't be cute. They'll come right after you. This Kansas City ball club will be running. I think it'll be almost like a track meet. Does he have a pretty good move? It's a fair move, but you can see as you watch his delivery here now as he's throwing in his stretch that he has a fairly slow delivery to, to home plate. So it, you definitely, I think, you're going to see some running if the Royals do get somebody on base. Harry Wendelstadt, the home plate umpire, walking out to talk to Bob Walk. And there are the umpires. Wendelstadt at home plate. He's from the National League. Bill Kunkel of the American League is at first base. Paul Pryor of the National League at second base. Don Denkinger, he's from the American League. He's at third base. Left field, Dutch Rennert of the National League. And Nick Bremigan of the American League is in right field. Only three pitchers in the history of baseball or World Series play. Bob Walk is the third. Have ever started the first game of the World Series as a rookie. Go over Cleveland Alexander and Joe Black. Oddly enough, Walk in the minor leagues at the beginning of this year. That's never happened before. Well, he'll be facing Willie Wilson, who hit 326 in 1980 with three home runs, 49 runs batted in. He's a big guy, six foot three, 190. 25 years old, born in Montgomery, Alabama, now lives in Summit, New Jersey. He was the Royals' June draft pick, the top one in the regular phase of 1974. Ball one. That's fouled out of play. One ball and one strike. Willie Wilson he gets on you almost have to throw to third to head him off he is Gene Mock calls him the most disruptive base runner the most disruptive player in the American League foul out of play one ball two strikes walk appears to be throwing pretty hard that last pitch especially Tom I say he has an outstanding fastball Tony and he'll come right at you with an occasional slider occasional curveball but this, if he does have a problem will be with control and the hitters are going to see a lot of fastballs he struck him out good fastball one out no fooling around Tony he comes right at him fastball high fastball really right down in the middle of the plate it doesn't look like he's going for a corner or whatever he's just depending on his power depending on his, on his speed and trying to blow the ball right by Willie Wilson one away and here's Hal McRae strike one didn't get it McRae they got him from Cincinnati with Wayne Simpson for Roger Nelson and Richie Scheinblum what a trade that was 34 years old Hal McRae side one and one could be the most important man in this lineup for George Brett Hitting in front of him today as he does against right handers. He usually hits behind him against left handers. If he has a good series, Brett might have a good series. Two balls and one strike. McRae, 5'11, as we look at George Brett, practically the Kansas City franchise. He really woke up America going for 400. Good fastball. He misses 3 and 1. McRae, born in April. 
Avon Park, Florida, now lives in Bradenton. That's out of play. Three balls, two strikes, nobody on. One man out, top of the first, game one. Players on these two teams do not have much World Series experience. McCray has been in two. Ken Brett has been in the World Series for the Royals and just two for the Phillies. Rose and your former teammate, Tuck McGraw. Three balls and two strikes. You know, one of the most useless questions, I think, Tony and Tom, is when they ask a guy, who would you rather play in a World Series? They asked Ken Brett that, and he said the Chicago Cubs. <laughs> Base on ball, so McRae is on. A base runner, and it brings up George Brett. And if you start with his statistics, you'll be here until next week. Last two hits this man has had have been home runs. You all saw the shot off the goose, Gossage. He also had a home run against Davis to left center field, Kansas City. His last two base hits have been home runs. Brett was holding a hot water bottle in the on deck circle at game time. The temperature was 48 degrees, the wind chill factor at 44. And those pitchers like to saw that bat off in your hands when it's cold. Put those bees in there. It's popped up. Mike Schmidt taking charge in foul territory. Coming out, McRae at first base, and it brings up Willie Mays Akins. Willie Mays Akins, born in Seneca, South Carolina, still lives there. Born during the 1954 World Series, so it's pretty obvious who he was named after. The delivering physician was the man who said, we're going to call you Willie Mays Akins. 6'2", 220. He'll be 26 years old on October 14th. And there are his stats. 20 home runs, 98 runs batted in. And if that ball's in the area, you're going to see a pretty good swing. You know, one of the interesting stats on Willie Mays Akins, Joe, is that hitting behind George Brett, with Joe Brett having over 100 RBIs, Akins himself has 98. So, I mean, on the Phillies, you've got Schmidt Luzinski. On this club, you've got another really hot duo for RBIs in Brett and Akins. Second half. He had knee surgery at the end of last year when he was with the Angels, missed the championship series, and they said that hampered his swing. So he came on very strong top in the last three months of the year. There are two outs. McRae's at first. They want to keep that hole between first and second open. Willie Mays Aiken's a good pull hitter. McRae has stolen 10 of 12 times this season. Which I think is unusual because basically the times we've seen Aikens, he's been a pull hitter, but Maddox in center field way over to left center field. Maybe they're going to try and pitch him away, and they think that he will not be able to pull the great fastball that Walk has. Look at the defense. Look at the right field line. So when you see that kind of defense, that means that the responsibility is on the pitcher. I think, Tony, what you're going to see here, and Joe, is that you're going to see definitely what the pitcher and how the pitcher, they're not going to let Willie Mays Aikens get out of the batter's box. He wants to scoop that left foot out of the batter's box. Harry Wendelstedt, the home plate umpire, a very good National League umpire. Which is unusual, I think, because maybe Booney asked him to do it, but if he gets a base hit, the umpire could call him out, I believe, for being out of the batter's box. He should maybe call to the umpire's attention quietly. Two balls and one strike with two outs. You just have to have part of your foot on it. There you see it. That's why they rub out that line, and it's one of those irritants that it catches. See him sneaking out? Line foul down the third base line. What you try to do as a catcher sometimes is just keep bringing that up and agitate the hitter because Willie Mays Hankins will put a part of his foot there and then ease his way out. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. McRae's at first. He hit that off the end of the bat, and those bees, that's just like getting a little bit of a shock is what happens. It's cold. Hit that ball off the end of the bat. Tom, I don't think 
think it's just the speed of walk. That in itself is something so far tonight, it looks like. But the fact that his ball is moving away from left-handed hitters, so. Well, it's going to move away from the left-handers and obviously into the right-handers. We had a pretty good discussion between Wendell Stead and Aikens down there about where he's going to put his foot. Because right after he did draw that line and said, you got to stay in the batter's box, the very next pitch, uh -huh. he edged himself right back out again. Well, you know where they got that from? Charlie Lau, now the Yankees hitting instructor. Move away from the plate and back as far as you can get. And you can believe that Booney's pouring a little gasoline on that fire. Uh huh. There goes the runner. It's foul back. McRae heading out. You know, Joe, we just talked about that rule about the batter's box as McRae goes back. We've got Ron Luciano in the booth with us. And Ronnie, can you fill us in on that? Yeah, technically, what they, he's telling me. Uh, Willie Mays, of course, is that every, when you, if you, like you said earlier, if you hit that ball while you're out of the box, I'm going to have to call you out. So get that foot in there and keep it in there. It's well hit, left center field. Maddox is there. Maddox has room, makes the catch, and that ends the first inning. Willie Mays Aikens flies to center, and as we go into the bottom half of the first inning, no score. Kansas City, Philadelphia. Introducing the Pepsi-Cola World Series scorecard, an exciting new game with thousands of prizes. He's out. Here's how you play. Rub off these baseballs on your Pepsi game card, and if your score matches the game score, you'll be eligible to win this Ford Mustang, this Mattel electronic baseball game, cash, and lots more. Pick up game cards at participating stores. Play the Pepsi-Cola World Series scorecard game. And be a winner. You know, I happen to tell my Allstate agent about how everything I have, I have two of. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Like two cars, he asked? Maybe Allstate's two-car discount can save you money on insurance. I compared. Allstate saves me more. I can use the money. Noah! Dinner! One wife. Compare. Allstate's multi-car discount may save you more money. You're in good hands with Allstate. And that's a promise from us, the good hands people. We're back in Veterans Stadium, Philadelphia, for game one of the World Series. And here's the defensive alignment for the Kansas City Royals. Willie Wilson is in left field. When he becomes a center field, he'll be the best ever out there, one of the best ever. Amos Otis in center, Clint Hurdle in right. George Brett at third, UL Washington the shortstop. Frank White, he was the MVP in the American League Championship Series. He's at second. Willie Mays Aikens at first. Daryl Porter, the catcher, the pitcher, Dennis Leonard. The batting order that Leonard will be facing has Lonnie Smith leading off in left field, Pete Rose at first base, Mike Schmidt third base batting third, Bake McBride in the cleanup spot, a little bit unusual there, but he wanted to break up that right back-to-back uh, -back right right-handed hitter, so Lusinski, the DH, Gary Maddox is in center field, Manny Trio at second base, Larry Boa the shortstop, and Bob Boone is the catcher. And Dennis Leonard, a pretty good pitcher, Tom. 29-year-old Dennis Leonard, Joe. Six foot one, 190 pounds, has won 20 games for the Royals and three out of the last four years. This year, a 20 game winner again, 20 and 11. Outstanding fastball, outstanding nasty slider, and very aggressive pitcher. I talked to him before the game. We were down there on the bench. He says he's not going to change his game plan. He's going to have a good fastball, good slider, and go right after the Philly hitters. Tom, you used the word nasty. What do you mean a nasty slider? Very late breaking, very sharp slider when he gets it down in the strike zone keeps it away from those right handed hitters and nasty in a sense he'll come into those left hand hitters and especially on a cool night tonight get in on those hands and you'll get more of those bees you're talking about. Okay. So Dennis Leonard against Lonnie Smith. Smith hit 339 during the season three home runs good speed. And it's ball one. With a designated hitter rule in effect for this World Series, manager Dallas Green can put Lonnie Smith in his lineup for his speed. And he's got a good bat and also include the power of Greg Luzinski in the D8 spot. No matter which way you look at it, though, it's been a problem defensively for them. Leonard, 155 strikeouts. And Barker, as you see, led with 187. There's a good fastball. Two balls in the strike. Bouncing ball. Frank White has 
has it. Run away. Joe, Tom, and I talked to Frank White as we all did talk to various players around the batting cage. Frank was talking about getting that first World Series, the World Series ground ball. He said, I wasn't in a hurry. He's talking about it right now. He said, this field is much slicker and faster than the one in Kansas City. And he was very concerned, wasn't he, for a great fielder that he is. Right now, he's talking to Willie Mays Atkins. Tony, I think this AstroTurf, especially with a little chilling, and it gets a little bit harder, and even Larry Bow was concerned about it, that the ball's going to be a little bit quicker coming off that AstroTurf on the ground balls. In the summer, of course, when it's very warm, it's a little bit more resilient and takes some of the energy out of the ball and won't be quite as quick as it is under, say, cool weather conditions. Misses one ball, one strike. You've heard it before, but we'll tell you again. The inspirational leader of this ball club, and throughout every out when they were behind in that league championship series, Rhodes was all over some of his players to inspire them. By Hopper, UL Washington has it. There's a road to us. They follow him coming back. UL Washington, good arm, a toothpick, kind of guides him, I believe. He said at the time he sleeps with him. <laughs> I asked him why he puts the toothpick in his mouth, and he said, why not? <laughs> so they're two away, nobody on. Mike Schmidt. Schmidt, 48 home runs, 121 runs batted in, hit 286. I gotta wonder, Tom, that if McCray is what I think he means to Brett, the guy behind Schmidt or in front of Rose, that they might mean to his because he's a guy they're gonna try and pitch around, the same as they want Brett for the Royals. Exactly right. Retz is the guy on the, on the Royal Ball Club you don't want to beat you. Schmidt's the guy who on the Philly Club could mean disaster. He could carry a ball club through a World Series if he gets hot. He had a very difficult playoff series, pressing probably, and now obviously looking for a very good World Series. Two strikes to count on Mike Schmidt. Oddly enough, when you look at it, the two guys you don't want to have beat you, Schmidt of the Phillies and Brett of Kansas City, were both pretty well stopped in the playoffs, and yet they went on to win. So it shows the balance of both ball clubs. Two strikes to count. Misses. Mike Schmidt has an interesting theory. He says that if he hits the fastball hard the first time, that he feels that he's given a message to the pitcher that I can handle your fastball. It doesn't necessarily have to be a base hit, just a good, hard, solid smack. Right now, it's one ball, two strikes, two outs, nobody on. Joe, if he hits that fastball too, Mike is an outstanding off speed or a curveball hitter, and if he can get to your fastball, you're in trouble. He didn't get to that fastball, so he's out on strikes. The Phillies go down one, two, three. We complete one inning of play. Kansas City, nothing. Philadelphia, nothing. This is Polaroid's new Time Zero Super Color film, and you know what this is. Camera? A one step. Don't be cute. Time Zero? That's a funnier name than one step. It's developing from time zero. The instant leaves the camera. You begin to see it in 10 seconds. She ought to be in pictures. It's the world's fastest developing color. It's sharper and brighter than before. Spectacular. But who named it time zero? You? Polaroid, why? Oh, I love it. Mm. Time zero. Tap is beautiful for Pixar. Tap makes it beautiful for you. Tap is the way to do it. There's really nothing to it. Dap makes it beautiful to fix up. Dap. More and more people who don't know anything about home fix up are finding all they gotta know is. Dap makes it beautiful to fix up. Dap. G E. We bring your day to life. Good morning. We help you face the day. Good morning. We take the pounds away. Good morning. We make you smile. GE, we bring good things to life. We put things close at hand to make the most of your morning time. GE, we bring good things to live in. We bring good things to life. Thursday on Teams People Play. Make a big splash at the World Cannonball Championships, sand drag races in California, and the Smoky River Marathon. It's Games People Play Thursday. Well, the rookie Bob Walker, the Phillies, had a relatively easy first inning. 
We talked to his pitching coach, Herm Sturrett, to give us some insight on Bob Walk. Bobby Walk has a fastball that could be overpowering, and he has a good curveball and also a good slider and a changeup. And if he can stay ahead of the hitters early and sell himself down, I feel like this young man can pitch a good ball game for us. Bob Walk from his pitching coach, Herm Sturrett. Harold Porter leads it off. Porter, six footer, 193, born in Joplin, Missouri. When I think of Joplin, I think of the late great Gabby Street. Now lives in Kansas City. Didn't get it a fastball, overpowering strike one. Joe, really among the regulars for the Royals, there weren't a whole lot of off years. Daryl Porter, you see by his stats, and Brian doubled the pregame show, told his story, but he had an off year as did Amos Otis. But both had either physical problems or the rehabilitation problem that uh, Daryl Porter went through. He's got a good eye. He can get you a base on balls in a hurry. One ball, two strikes. Porter with Jim Colburn. Came over for Jamie Quirk, Jim Wolford, and Bob McClure. Milwaukee. This Royals ball club, and you alluded to it earlier, Joe, about the left-handed hitters, is a much better hitting ball club and a better team all round against right-handed pitching. Two balls, two strikes, no outs, nobody on, no score. We're in the top of the second inning. Walk averages 5.6 strikeouts per nine innings. Just missed inside breaking pitch. You see Wendell that wave that hand over telling the bench that ball was inside. They can see high or low but it runs a manager and a team crazy when the umpire keeps motion inside or outside because you can't see from the bench and you have no argument. Walk team just as Tony said good base on balls hitter and Porter is on and walk averages 4.2 base on balls per nine innings. There's his first one of the night and it brings up Amos Otis. Second walk given up by Bob Walk. Those stats on Otis don't tell a true story. He came out of spring training. It was during the player strike, the work stoppage. He went to a batting machine, one of those where you pay a buck for 50 balls, and one of the balls hit him on the finger, ruptured a tendon. Missed about 40 games. There's a strike, Amos Sotis. 33 years old, 170 pounds, 5'11", born in Mobile, Alabama, lives in Blue Springs, Missouri now. Came over from the Mets with Bob Johnson for Joe Foy. There's a guy that started out, Amos Otis, as a shortstop in the Red Sox organization, then played some first base, third base Mets. They made him a center fielder. You never know with Porter there. Otis has been hitting the right field a little bit more. Porter doesn't have base stealing speed. One ball, one strike. Otis was a teammate of mine, Joe, when I was in New York for a while before he was traded over here to Kansas City. He was a center fielder, and, and uh, Gil Hodges, who was our manager at that time, wanted to make him a third baseman, and Otis liked the outfield. And I think that's one of the reasons he was ended up being traded over to Kansas City. That's funny, if a manager wants to make an infield and you like the outfield, you end up getting traded. I think it's interesting as you look at five players throughout Major League history who started out as shortstop as he did. The Red Sox organization, Mantle was a shortstop, DiMaggio was a shortstop. You could go on and on and name more and more. Two balls in one strike. Nobody out. Well hit, left field, Smith going back. That ball's out of here. Home run for Amos Otis. And this crowd, some 65,000, really still, as Otis seemed to reach out and hit that ball. Tommy, looked like a breaking ball to you? Looked like a breaking ball to me, Tony. It looked like he just reached out and, and punched the ball. I, I, and when he first hit it, I thought it was going to be a routine fly to the left field. Of course, the ball carries extremely well in this ballpark, but it certainly doesn't look with the swing that he had like he had it, hit it home run power enough to hit it out. And Lonnie Smith gave up on it early. You bet he did. You know, I think it's deceiving as we look at this one go out of the park for two run home run. 
many people feel the Phillies have more power on their team. But once you get by Schmidt, who had the big year, led the major leagues with 48, you go down to Luzinski with 19. A bigger ballpark that the Royals play in in Kansas City, it is much more difficult to hit home runs out of. So their power could be deceiving, especially against right-handed pitchers. There's the Kansas City bench. They've got a two-run lead. And Hurdle is the batter. The Phillies bench. That's fouled out of play. You think the Phillies didn't see this situation before? Yeah. <laughs> During the league championship series for five games, probably about four games in a row the Phillies saw against the Astros were all but unbelievable. They were. But it took Tuck McGraw to put it in focus for me. He said watching those games is like going through the art museum on a motorcycle. A lot of nice pictures, but you never got a chance. By the time you start to dwell on one play, something else would happen. 2 2 pitch. Left center field. Lonnie Smith going back. He's calling for it. He's there. He makes the catch. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. Joe Garagiola with Tony Kubek, Tom Seaver here in Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. The Phillies trailing by two, as you see. A home run by Amos Otis after a base on balls to Daryl Porter. That's the story. And here is Frank White. Right field, McBride has plenty of room. Makes the catch her two away. KNBC, Los Angeles. Amos Sotis' home run, his very first World Series at bat, makes him the 16th player to do so. The last one was Doug DeCincy's in 1979. So Otis, one of those boyhood dreams comes true. Here is UL Washington now. This is one of the trouble spots that manager Jimmy Fry knew he had to fill when he took this job. Shortstop and bullpen. Well, we know he got Quisenberry. This guy right here really filled that shortstop hole, replacing Freddie Patek. UL hit 273. He fouls off the first pitch. This young man, as we look at Jim Fry, the rookie manager of the Royals. UL Washington, uh, I think, a real inspiration to that aspiring ball player because he was selected in 1973 by the Royals for their academy. Went down there, graduated, and here he is in the big leagues. Two strikes to count. Ian Frank White, another graduate of the academy. Washington's a switch hitter. Look how very quietly he went through that league championship series, that average. He's been switch hitting five years. You know what he said got to him, Tom? He said, the higher I got up in baseball, when I finally got to AAA, he was a natural right hand. He said, that slider killed me. He said, it made me turn around to the left side. It's killed a lot of him. Oh, you bet. <laughs> That's low. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Herm Sturette, Dallas Green. The F Kansas City Royals, two. Phillies, nothing. Top of the second. Home run by Amos Otis. Bouncing ball. Pete Rose, fair ball. Flips to his pitcher, Walk. Routine play for Pete Rose. A little bit exciting for Walk. That ends the top of the second inning. And the score, Kansas City 2, Philadelphia nothing. Where in the world are we? Now, what's this place? Welcome to the last place on Earth. Look at all this. Oh, uh, dear. Like my boutique. Cute. Yeah, we just have traveler's checks. City Corp? Yes. Love them. Imagine City Corp traveler's checks are even accepted in the last place on Earth. Our lucky day. Travel the world with us. City Corp traveler's checks. Introducing an American car designed for a changing world and with a commitment to quality. Introducing the beautifully new Ford Granada. Built with a new design. Smaller in size yet more spacious than ever before. Built with Granada's highest mileage ratings ever. 
and built with Ford's quality control system. 38 different inspectors examine every single car. The new Granada, built for a changing world from Ford. I'm Pete Conrad. I've flown fighters for the Navy, a spacecraft to the moon. And in my work here at McDonnell Douglas, the DC-9 and DC-10 as well. The DC-10 is one of the most thoroughly tested jetliners in the world. It flies a million miles a day. And this is our new DC-9 Super 80, the quietest plane of its size. Quiet inside, quiet for airport neighborhoods. The new Super 80, the DC-10. I recommend them. Lost River Lake was a thriving resort until Piranha, a mutant breed of man-eating fish. There'll be no way to contain it. First time on TV, Thursday. Well, the Royals' Dennis Leonard takes a two-to-nothing lead out for the second inning for the Royals. And we talked to him yesterday. What he wants to look for and expect for these Phillies hitters. Well, basically, you'd like to know the guys in the lineup that can supply the power. And, you know, the Phillies have Schmidt and Lezinski. Uh, you know, there might be a situation with a couple of men on base where, you know, if there's an open base, you might not want to give in to them too much and, you know, let them beat you with the long ball. But, you know, basically, uh, you know, you want to know their strengths and weaknesses. Uh, you want to know how the other teams try to pitch them a little bit, and I guess we'll get into that a little bit more in the scouting report. But, you know, basically, I feel my biggest thing to know is the ones that can hit the home runs and, you know, try to neutralize that power. Dennis Leonard neutralized the power. Bake McBride batting fourth takes it for ball one. Bake went on top of that plate. Takes a strike on the outside corner. He likes the ball inside. Uses a very light bat. 32 ounces but he can get around on it. It's a small bat. 32-32. Didn't get it. One ball, two strikes. Nobody out, nobody on to score. Two nothing. Kansas City, we're in the bottom of the second. Dennis Leonard. Joe, I think what Dennis said in his piece right before this inning started that, as you well know, these teams get scouting reports from, you know, the scouts have been following him for the last six weeks or whatever it's been. And I think the most important thing for a pitcher when he's going against a club that he's never seen before is what is a hitter's exactly what he said. What is a hitter's strength and what is his weakness? But I asked Dennis before the game, I said, well, anything different, what he can do? He says, well, if I get to a situation where it's my strength and it's a hitter's strength, I've got to go with what's been successful for me the entire year. I've got to go with what's my best pitch, how I feel like to get him out. UL Washington. In time, Bake McBride is out. So there's one away, and it brings up Luzinski. The Goodyear Blimp Enterprise giving us those beautiful shots. The pilot, Captain Dick Daniels, and there you see it. Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia, where right now the Kansas City Royals lead two to nothing, one out in the bottom of the second. Greg Luzinski, the DH, designated hitter. Taps it foul, strike one. Tom, without getting into a seminar, do you pitch away from the hitter's strength and to his weakness? Well, I think there are certain situations, you know, it, it, it really does begin to be a seminar. Depends on how you're throwing, depends uh -huh. if there's a runner on second base, depends on what the score is. But I would think you, you might save a situation where you can attack a hitter's weakness if it becomes a game situation late in the ballgame, seventh inning, men on second and third, and you've got to get somebody out, maybe you save one pitch someplace where you can get a hitter out, his biggest weakness, so you can get him out in a game situation. Fouled out of play by Luzinski. And the count, one ball and two strikes. Let me pursue that with Tom Levin. Are you saying, and I don't think you, know, you never go to guys' weakness, because big league hitters adjust. They change. Exactly right. No, you, you definitely have to. You don't go to their strengths, that's for sure. I mean, if a, if a guy... Greg Luzinski is a low fastball inside the plate hitter. You don't sit there and throw low inside fastballs and wait for a game situation to pitch him away. You pitch him right there. You pitch him real tough. But in a game situation, you go after you. What you try to do is to go after the weakest spot that that hitter has. Two balls and two strikes on Luzinski. You saw Porter give that fastball sign the outside part of the plate. Willie Wilson. That's one of those, John. You talked to 
the Royals players or the opposition players in the American League, you will perk up your head and look for the center fielder because Otis looked like he was closer to the ball initially and Willie Wilson seems to come out of nowhere. You've heard it before but he is I think the fastest man in baseball. Mark you've got some tough ones in the, in the National League I know. Martinez his coach said it's like having a four man outfield like they have in softball. Two outs and this is Gary Maddox with 259 regular season. Didn't get the fastball. Maddox at 300 in the championship series. Six for 20. Big base hits. One ball, one strike, two outs. Chased a bad ball. He's a free swinger. Scouting report, Tom talking about. Tom, what I've heard is that don't throw him a fastball, strike the first pitch. First ball, fastball hitter, Joe. Right. That's a, that's a classic cliche when you're going over a ball club in the clubhouse to say what kind of hitter is. Is this fellow Gary Maddox dead? First ball, fastball hitter. Likes the fastball from the middle of the plate in, trying to keep hard stuff away. And as you can see, that's what Leonard has done in the last couple of pitches. Fastball away and a slider away. Well hit. George Brett has it. Long throw across is in time, and Leonard has retired six in a row. We complete two innings of baseball here. The score is Kansas City two, Philadelphia nothing. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Reagan and Carter speak on the issues. John Chancellor's exclusive interviews with the Republican and Democratic presidential candidates begin tomorrow on NBC Nightly News. Pickleologist Dr. Cucumbus Clausen speaking on... The Chill Pickle. A doctor, you mean the Dill Pickle. No, the Chill Pickle. My Clausen Chill Dill. How do you tell a chill from a dill? My Chill Pickle's pickled cold, not cooked. Cooked? Most shelf pickles are cooked. The crunch is cooked out. But my Clausen Chill Pickle's never cooked. It's kept cold and conspicuously crunchy. Chillicious. The Clausen ch ch Chill Dill. In the refrigerated section. Of California's 422 different banks and savings and loans, none pays higher interest on 26-week $10,000 Treasury certificates than Wells Fargo. What's more, no savings and loan or bank can match Wells Fargo's reward for serious savers. Highest rate on Treasury certificates, first-rate service. Wells Fargo Bank comes through with both. Just say hello to a brand new world. It's just outside your door. Now that Pan Am and National are one, you can fly Pan Am to 25 great U.S. cities like Washington, D.C., Las Vegas, and New Orleans and get the kind of international service that's made us famous. Say hello to Pan Am. Say hello to a brand new A behind-the-scenes look at the Phillies and Royals tonight at 8. Some 65,000 here in Philadelphia. Willie Wilson will lead it off. A good crowd on hand. Strike one. Wilson was out on strikes his first time up. Chopper trio has it on a big hop. Easy out. Wilson is out. And that brings up Hal McRae. For the first time since he became commissioner, Bowie Kuhn is absent from a World Series game. His father passed away at the age of 87 earlier this week. The commissioner is in St. Augustine, Florida with his mother for the funeral, which will take place on Thursday. And all of us at NBC Sports. Certainly all of baseball send our condolences to Commissioner Kuhn. McRae fouls it off and it's strike one. McRae walked his first time up. One ball, one strike. George Brett says of McCray that he did not know how to play the game of baseball in a winning fashion until McCray came over. This is one of the most aggressive men you'll ever see. Base hit up the middle. 
McRae gets himself a hit. One out, two nothing. Royals leading, and McRae is on, and George Brett is the hitter. Brett fouled out his first time up. Possibility that a running game could start. Of course, with the left-handed hitter, you'd like to have the hole open, but Brett, with his great, great bat control, he wants a new series of signs from the third base coach, Gordy McKenzie. That's what the finger was. Started all over. I wasn't watching. Gray stole 10 times during the season, caught twice. Strike. struck out just 22 times all year long. Is that outstanding bat control? Just a commercial to let him know that, hey, I know you're there, and I'll be back after this next pitch. George Brett. Beautiful curveball. That's the first off-speed pitch he threw, Tom. Joe, it'll be very interesting, really, to watch how they pitched to Brett. Now, the first time up, they gave George a fastball. He popped it up. The first pitch, this time up, a fastball. And he comes back with what looks like a straight changeup. Looks like Booney wiggled his fingers before that to get the straight change. And it was a beautiful pitch. But it'll be interesting to see how a ball club here in the National League pitching against a fellow that they don't see all year. Just see him on TV, get the scouting report. A fellow that's hit 390. It can't be real easy for a rookie pitcher. Maybe the American League will learn something from the National League. They did a lot of pitching. Billy Martin had a good theory. He talked about it on television during the championship series about how to pitch Brett. Never the same way, basically. It's more in depth than that. One there, ball, two strikes. But there are some teams who try and pitch Brett away and play him away. Everybody you talk to, they say there's no set way. You just have to keep changing. And when you hit 390, you have to believe that. One two pitch. He was gone. He was gone. And I think Pete Rose yelled out to walk when he saw McCray leading and take one short stutter step, and he got walked the step uh, step off the rubber. Tip this bat. It's a strike. He gets some help from the third base umpire. Don Denkinger and Brett is out on strikes. He wasn't sure of it. Harry Wendelstad wasn't. He got some help and it's a strikeout. Pretty good breaking ball, Tom. Looks like they're going back with hard stuff inside. Boom, that one good changeup, and that's a slider. Looks like it's going to be a strike. Looked like a fastball, possibly. Fooled George. George, of course, had never seen Bob walk before, and it looked like it might have been, he thought it was a fastball back inside, broke down in the dirt, and fooled George. I don't think that George doesn't put that in his back pocket. He'll remember that pitch. Willie Mays Aikens. Aikens fly to center field his first time up. McRae the base runner. Score two to nothing. Kansas City leading. We're in the third. It's high. It's ball one. Two guys on the right of that split screen that you just saw a moment ago as we look at Aikens in the championship series. Rose and McRae played together and Rose taught McRae how to be fearless on the base pass and McRae brought it to Brett and the Royals. It's a good move, but not good enough. You know, Tony, as I watch this Kansas City club, they all look like they're contact hitters, except for this fellow right here. And he's he takes a healthy cut. I mean, he takes as healthy as cut as anybody, any ball player I've ever seen. He'll get down on that back knee, and he'll go, he'll go for the Atlanta coast if he can hit it that far. Times we've seen him, Tom. He, he's hit some low fastballs, and I've seen him. Low and inside. Perched on that front toe. Gray draws the throw. He's got Nancy over there, but you would still think that they would be leaving the hole between first and second open. But the defense in the outfield has Maddox in left center field, as we pointed out earlier. There he goes. Well hit, deep to right field, but she's curving foul. That's what I'm worried about, Tom. The defensive alignment that they are using on Aiken. You can saw, see how fast he got around on the inside pitch. And they're playing in the left field. Here it is, Tom. Well, hit and run. It looks like he's throwing a fastball in. Either they're going to throw him in real hard or throw him away real hard because 
Maddox, of course, is way around in left center. Is getting him in the right center field alley. Maybe they feel Akins, if he's going to pull the ball, he's really going to pull it. Pull it down the line. Not going to hit it in the in the right center field alley. If he goes to the other way, he's going to hit in the left center field alley, and Maddox is protecting that. Holding high, deep right center field. McBride going back. Maddox going back. Home run. That ball just got up there and just kept going. And Willie Mays Aikens just broke into his home run trot. He's just now getting to third base, and I don't blame him. He's going to enjoy it all the way. 4 nothing, Kansas City. Tom, we're seeing on those two home runs, and I'm not demeaning either this one by Aikens or Amos Soda, but how well the ball carries in this ballpark. Here it is again. Well, I can tell you from past experience, and you can see the awesome swing that Aikens has that the ball will carry very well in this ballpark. Maddox was way over in left center, and he did hit that ball right where the defense wasn't playing. Even if the ball had stayed in the ballpark, it would have been an extra base hit, even for Aikens, who was not a fast runner. Ball a little bit down and in. What? So it's four to nothing, and here is Daryl Porter, and it's ball one. Bob Walk, 1980. Gave up eight home runs. He's been touched for two of them tonight. In the second inning, a walk to Porter and a home run by Otis. Now a base hit by McRae, a home run by Akins. Two balls and no strikes to count. Two outs, nobody on. Four nothing, Kansas City leading. Game one of the 1980 World Series. Misses 3 0. The fans are getting restless right now. They're down by four. And Tom, I just got to look at down that Phillies bullpen. Well hit. Right field. It is a foul ball. Tony, you can see down there in the Phillies bullpen, nobody warming up. Four to nothing already here in the, That's just why in the third inning. And it's it I think it gives you a situation of what the Phillies bullpen is really like. They had to work so hard in Houston to get out of Houston alive from the Astros that they are really spent down there and I think philosophically what they're doing they've got two games here game tonight game in Monet with Carlton Gorn I think what they want to do deep down is to get out get out of Philadelphia one and one if they can get out of town one and one and have these two pitchers at least pitch maybe six seven or eight innings they're going to I think they'll be happy. Herm Storette coming out of the Philly dugout going to pay his first visit to rookie Bob Walk. I know you, well in a way in, in an indirect fashion you might have said this that they might be giving this game up so they can get their bullpen. I hate to say give, ever give up a World Series game. Billy Martin got into this problem with the Yankees one year when I think he went to his number four starter to start the first World Series game after a tough championship series. Well, I think it's obvious if you look at the scoreboard, top of the third, it's four to nothing, and they still have nobody, you know, warming up. Two outs, another runner on first. There's Dallas Green in the Philadelphia dugout. That they want Walk to pitch some. They don't want to go out there and have to get him in the third inning. They don't want to have to get him in the fourth inning. Amos Otis is the batter. He had a home run, a two-run homer his first time up. Porter, who walked. In the second is just walked and Otis takes a strike one strike to count walk seems to be throwing I would say well the two home runs have put him down by four he's walked three he struck out two he is allowed three hits two home runs and a single to McRae that's out of play. You know, Walk, when he was called up from the minor leagues, really got it out of the shoot in a hurry. He was one of the key men for the Phillies as the pitching staff was having problems. But late in the season, he really didn't pitch that well. And they moved Marty Bystrom, another rookie, into the rotation in September. And he went 5-0. and oh. That's the time where you alluded to earlier before the ball game, but he was really the number five starter at times this season. Well, he came on very strong, Tony, for him. I think it was 8-2, one point. And then in his last 12 starts of the season was three and six and had a 5.95 ERA, which is obviously not very good. He was eight and two before those last 12 starts of the season and did a superb job for the Phillies. Picked him up really. Bob Boone called him a lifesaver. Said he came along right when we needed him and he really picked us up when we had some injuries. One ball, two strikes, two outs, four nothing. Kansas City leading, top of the third. 
famous sodas. Nice play by Booney. Tom, let me take you back to Otis's home run. It was a two-one pitch. He threw a breaking ball. Is that a surprise to you? That pitch, Otis? It's a surprise to me in a sense that Walker's a fastball pitcher and a power pitcher. He's got to come at you and be aggressive. And he let Otis, who, from the people I've talked to, they say is a breaking ball hitter. He gave him a pitch to hit. I think he should have come at him right with a fastball. Of course, he turns around with Aikens and throws him a fastball, and he loses it for him too. Outside corner. Breaking ball. Mike Schmidt coming in fast. Bare hand grab. Throw. Not in time. Amos Otis beats it out. It'll be an infield hit. Tough play. Good speed by Otis. They have base runners at first and second. You'll see the speed of Otis on this breaking ball that he chops in the dirt. Schmidt was playing back. He made the play as quickly as you possibly could, barehanding it, flipping it over. And that'll show you the team speed of Otis in Kansas City. I'll show you the agility of Mike Schmidt down in third base. He made 27 errors, but he, he could be very acrobatic down there. That's another thing, Tony, about Mike Schmidt. Not only does he have tremendous confidence in his with his bat, he has tremendous confidence defensively, and he will try those kinds of plays. He will try the play that seems to be impossible because he's so confident in his abilities. Strike is called. He went around, says Harry Wendelstadt. One strike. Here's the play again. See Wendelstadt. Fastball misses. One ball, one strike. Wilson was the first out in this inning, and McRae singled. Brett was out on strikes. A home run by Aikens, a walk to Porter, and a base hit by Amos Sotis. It's low. Two balls and one strike. And there is Dickie Knowles for the Philadelphia Phillies. So they start to loosen up. Ace runners. Porter at second. Otis at first. Clint Hurdle. Base hit to left field. Daryl Porter rounding third. Here comes the throw. seem to be playing the first couple and needs under a little bit of ether. Here comes Lonnie Smith as poured around at third base. He stumbled and broke stride. I'm not saying that's why he's not getting it because he's hot by 15, 20 feet. But Lonnie Smith threw a rainbow, but he still gets Porter. Right there. Right there, he broke stride. Marty McKenzie sending him home, but no run score. I'm not the same crazy coach who used to storm around the sidelines yelling at the officials. I've learned to relax, and I drank light beer from Miller. Do you know that light's got a third less calories than a regular beer? And listen to this. Light doesn't fill me up. Besides that, light tastes fantastic. Oh, sure, there are a lot of other beers around, and you can drink any one you want. But let me tell you this. For light beer from Miller. I Everything you always wanted in a beer, now. and less. As I was saying, I don't care what anybody else... My broker says that with two children to put through college, I should start investing in stocks. What does your broker say? Well, Frank, my broker's E.F. Hutton, and E.F. Hutton says... When E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. I did join the army, but I joined a different army. Uh -huh. uh, I joined the one with the condos and the private rooms. <laughs> The blimp is overhead in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Show you a very picturesque sight. Full house. Here's that last play. Watch Boone 
on Porter. Boone is looking for a collision or a slide. Boone got his left foot, that foot that is planted, injured very severely. Look at him jerk it away during the championship series. He got hit three times in one ball game on a hard slide when he blocked the runner off. He is taking out of the way. In fact, he thought it might have been broken for a while. That was one of those card-carrying brother-to-brother nice room service tags. I will tag you, and you will not hit me, and we'll both play and live happily ever after. I'll tell you one thing, Harry Wendelstadt, the whole plate upper, had his nose right in it, too, didn't he? I'll tell you, you got to be like Pete Rose. you got to arrive at home plate in a bad mood, not in a good mood. Chopper, UL Washington will have to hustle. Here's a throw, they get him. Good play by UL Washington. Tony, Some, sometimes yeah. inconsistent, Joe, but darn good. You used an expression before, a quiet way he does it. Here it is, a chop ball by Trio. You can see the effects of the artificial surface. No play for Leonard. Trio does not have good speed, he's about average. UL Washington used to the artificial surface, gets it over in a hurry. these guys in the American League and everybody said what a fine really a fine player a fellow that solidified that Kansas City infield that Washington was and that was an outstanding that wasn't an easy play right there that he made good transfer and a good throw one ball and one strike on Larry Boa Dennis Leonard has retired seven in a row one ball hit out the infield foul out of play Tom he's been very impressive very impressive, getting ahead of his hitters, a very good sinker, a good slider. Uh, really been very, very aggressive. Somebody asked me the other day, said, what's, uh, what's his weakness? His weakness is April, April, May, and the first part of June. He just has a, a mental block about, uh, about those early part of the year. He was seven and seven, and then ended up 20 and 11. A workhorse of a pitcher. Joe, 280 some odd innings he threw for Kansas City this year. He was 14 and 4 since June 29th, including a win over the Yankees in the playoffs. Bears out what you just said. Boa up the middle. That's going to go through for a base hit. There's the first hit of the game. So the Phillies have a base runner. We're in the bottom of the third, four to nothing. One man out. Boa at first base. Boone hit 229, an off year, but you talk about a guy hurting. Got some big hits for him. His knees, he just can't even get down low enough to get in position to throw. He's back. He has been booting this town during the course of this year, but not at World Series time, at least not yet. The Phillies have team speed also. Bo, one of the men who can run, but down by four runs. And the gate's a lot of that speed. Unlikely that he'll go. There he goes. <laughs> There's a strike. The throw. Safe. He got the crowd excited. And that shows you how smart no shortstop is. Unlikely to go. The words are out of my mouth. And he goes. The game has changed. And it is something that just might be enough to excite a Phillies team and get something going. Here comes Boa from left center field. Was Leonard not paying too much attention to him right there? I think it's the same kind of thing you were talking about, Tony. It's four to nothing, and, it, and really there's no way a runner's going to go, and he's just safe by a matter of three or four inches. It surprised Frank White. I got a question his time. He was behind the bag in short center field. Not that extreme but it surprised him and he didn't get to the bag in time it definitely took the Kansas City ball club by surprise I think it took Leonard by surprise and White by surprise that's one of those stolen bases I think that's a commercial it says guys we're not dead and we're going to be running all night we don't care what the scoreboard says the scoreboard's up there to hit balls off and not to read yeah but I appreciate Tom Seaver getting me off the hook there thank you Ken. <laughs> <laughs> to play two balls and two strikes one out Boa during the season at 21 of 27 in the stolen base department that's a 78 percentage
Papo. in good fashion made a good slide in the second base. Tom haven't you ever seen it when a guy's got a bad ankle he's got a base hit inside like he made a side trip to Lourdes. You forget about all that tape and all the pain if you can get a base hit or make an extra base that <laughs> pain goes away very quickly. He gets an instant miracle. Smith base hit left field. Boone will be held up at third. Lonnie Smith doubles out. first. They got him between first and second and now the runner will try to score. Baseman Willie Mays Aikens. But Booney scored, it's 4 to 2. Well, here it is, just out of the reach of UL Washington. Boone was being held up by Lee Elliott, the third base coach, being down by three. There's the cutoff, George Brett, and they call the man who just gets trapped as Boone is scoring right now. Brett threw the ball too soon. He was afraid of Lonnie Smith's speed, but Smith fell down. They call him skates. He's done that before on this artificial service. He's been kind of slipping and sliding all year long. One strike to count on Pete Rose, 4-2. to We'll get the official scoring for you because Boone actually stopped at third. Came in on the rundown. Rose doesn't get it. Well, it's got to go seven. It's five seven, and five, four. Four. Three was the put out. There's no RBI. Give there. Can't give an RBI. Stars are the fielder's choice, I guess, on the throw. So even though Lonnie Smith may have goofed up, he at least got the run home, and that was his speed that did it. Outside. I think Tony is a pretty basic fundamental error, the kind of error that Kansas City will not make in a rundown. I think George Brett has got to get rid of the ball. He can't be running away from Boone with his back to Boone. He's got to get the ball down and let Frank White handle the ball at second base because Frank White has to play out in front of him. Foul ball. I think he was afraid of Lonnie Smith's speed. If he held it too long and didn't charge at him, Smith was going to beat his throw to second. bullpen ready Martin he's got an excellent curveball he has control problems so unlike Dallas Green and the Phillies just a couple runs off Leonard and they've got somebody going second run it's 42 the time run is at the plate and you got the guy who hit 48 home runs for you standing in there Pete Rose is the guy who'll get it started for you Tug McGraw once again talking about Pete Rose he said if there's anybody in baseball that plays harder than Pete Rose gotta be an outpatient 
You know, Joe, you look at that pitch when Pete Rose got hit. Didn't he didn't try and get out of that he what, ball away that ball very well. He, he said, go it. ahead here, let me have it. I'll take it and let Mike Schmidt up the base with somebody on. So the tying run is up there now. Four to two is the score. Two men out. You can see here the slider breaks inside to Rose, and Rose just soon take first base any way he can get it. And he knows that'll fire his club up. Fastball misses. Ball one. The crowd, I tell you, it was just silence on the home runs by Amos Otis in the second inning, a two run homer. A two run homer by Akins was four to nothing, and all of a sudden, this crowd, a jam packed ballpark, really alive. strike two outs Kansas City four Philadelphia two as we look at that Phillies bench Top. there's Todd Struck out his first time up. A good cripple shooter. He'll be looking for his pitch right here. And if he gets it, he'll go to work on it. Some balls given up by Dennis Leonard. Here is Beck McBride who bounced out his first time up. Schmidt at first, Rose at second. This inning started. Trio bounced out. Boa single to center field. He stole second. Boone double to left, driving in Boa. Smith single. Boone stopped at third. Smith got caught in a rundown. He was tagged out. 7 5 4 3, but Boone scored. And then Rose hit by a pitch, and now Schmidt has just walked. Year. He's had 87. You've got to remember, a lot of the time he was hitting in the number two spot. Strike. One ball and one strike. Pete Rose put the match to the gasoline, and we had the explosion for two runs here.
want McBry to come back out. Foul ball. That's out of play. McBride did come out for a short while. And how quickly it changes. It's five to four. Jim Fry, who had a four-run lead as he went into this bottom half of the third, now trails by a run. 5-4 Philadelphia. Dallas Green, who wanted to break up the two right-handed power hitters, Schmidt and Luzinski, put McBride in that fourth slot, and oh, baby, did it pay off for him. Pull foul. He got around on that one. Two strikes. Dallas Green. There he is. It's been a love-hate relationship between his team, some of the players, and himself. He's at spats with Wilsinski, Boa, McBride, Maddox. Two strikes to count on Lusinski. Fouls it back. Think about it. If he starts walk and he wins this game, Dallas Green with Carlton, one up, is really in good shape. So it's a much, much bigger game than is indicated just by the lineups. Well, I think that what Tony said in the, in the pregame show, we are talking about you might see a lot of runs. He went in the bottom of the third. We see nine runs already. He went around. He got him on strikes. That ends the inning, but a big inning for the Philadelphia Phillies. Look at this crowd on their feet. As we end three innings, the score here, Philadelphia 5, Kansas City 4. This is for you. An invitation to pivot. This is the Dillette Atra Invitation Razor. Its twin blades keep the perfect shaving angle because of this, the Atra Pivot. It gives you a better shave than any razor that can't pivot. And now you can pick up this Gillette Atra razor for under $1.50. But hurry, this offer to pivot is for a limited time only, so run out before we do. Using the surgical fiber optic lens, Prestone Labs is going to show you what weak, neglected antifreeze can do to your radiator after only 9,000 miles. Look at these passages, rust, Corrosion, continued neglect could clog them and overheat this radiator. But look at a Prestone protected radiator after the same 9,000 miles. Quite a difference. Prestone has a patented silicone silicate formula to lock out rust and corrosion. Prestone 2 and Prestone Super Flush. No wonder we're number one. It's Sears National Hardware Week sale. Save $170 on this Craftsman 10 inch radial arm saw. Handy upfront controls, leg set and casters included. Now $299.88. Or save $35 on this Craftsman gas chainsaw. Rugged yet lightweight for easy cutting. Case included, it's $149.98. Now at Sears National Hardware Week sale. The man who started it all is back. It's the Steve Allen Comedy Hour with Lucille Ball, Steve Martin, and George Kennedy. One of TV's all-time greats returns Saturday. The first three innings have been characterized by a bit of role reversal here at Veterans Stadium. The Royals, known as a speed team, have scored their four runs on two homers. The Phillies, known as a power team, used Kansas City-like speed and jarring to generate some offense, then topped off a five-run inning with a three-run homer by Bake McBride. So it's 5-4 Phillies, and of great import is the question of Bob Walk's ability to handcuff the Royals' offense and buy much-needed time for a tired Philly bullpen. As we start the fourth, the 60,000-plus fans of the vet have lots to cheer about. Joe? Okay, Brian. Here's Frank White. It's a strike. Dallas Green starting his rookie Bob Watt. Got in trouble sticking with him. Didn't mean the swing's going to be a tough play. Rose to walk in time. One out. Rose makes this play like he's been playing first base his entire life. Remember, this is just his second year there. He gets the ball, walk is over in time. He shovels it over in a big hurry because White can run. He is a very aggressive infielder, Pete Rose. He goes after balls. He might not have the speed of some. 
Tony, I think he's just an aggressive player, the kind of a guy that just generates excitement. He makes it happen. He's the one with Boa who really walked walk this crowd up, this, this Phillies team. He seemed to be thinking, well, let's see what happens. And he just makes it happen. Now, Boa, with the steal four runs down, I believe forced Dennis Leonard, a veteran pitcher, to lose his composure. Then he hit Rose, and the fireworks went off. is out good play by Boa two up and two down brings up Willie Wilson Here he Boa. go ahead Tony excuse me I'll tell you one thing he doesn't miss many balls at all he has slowed down a step with age it was a very close play as you see saw UL Washington speed especially from the left left side lead we're in the top of the fourth nobody on two men out two strikes Bob walk coming right at him Wilson didn't like the call Tom Watson a big Kansas City fan I'll tell you that Swing did he go around asking no this third base umpire Don Degginger. See Watson threw out the first ball was it for game two at Kansas City of the championship series. Tony I played in the golf tournament in a manner with him and he kept wanting to know about the Kansas City Royals the Kansas City Royals. He's a big baseball fan. Foul tip. Wilson stays alive. Tommy Bob walk right now looks like he's got a little bit rejuvenated. Good fastball Tony and he's come back giving Wilson good steady diet of hard stuff the last two have been two hard sliders but definitely your, your ball club comes back scores five runs is definitely going to pick you up no question about it he had to feel down he gives up the two home runs and gets his ball club behind four to nothing but this Philly ball club you know Rose and Boa they'll be pick you right up get you right back in the ball game. foul out of play two balls two strikes. Leonard was throwing in the last inning when the Phillies scored five. Dickie Knowles continued to throw. So he's ready. So Dallas Green's philosophy has changed a little bit. He's got a few innings out of walk. He got the lead back. Three balls, two strikes, two outs, five to four. Phillies are leading. Out of play. Count remains full. He's just throwing the fastball by Willie Wilson. He did the first time. He Hit a breaking ball a second time, and he threw that fastball by him. They are really shading him as if he's not going to get around on that fastball. All towards the left field line. And fights it off. Three balls, two strikes, two outs, nobody on. 5 4, Philadelphia leading Kansas City. We're in the fourth. Off the handle, out of play, still going to the left side. Wilson, I'll tell you, he goes in that batter's box. He's going to get himself a time at bat, 705. That's how many times he went to bat this season. That's a major league record. One for a fastball. There it was. Didn't mean to swing. Mike Schmidt has a big hop. Throw in time. It was close, but they got him. Schmidt the Rose, three up and three down. And we go into the bottom half of the fourth inning to score here. Philadelphia five, Kansas City four, and do up for the Philadelphia Phillies in the bottom of the fourth, Gary Maddox, Manny Trio, and Larry Boa.
When your financial plan helps you keep up so inflation won't get you down. You really believe in those IDS ideas. When her hard work earns a degree, but your investments help pay for it. You really believe in those IDS ideas. Good money ideas from your IDS representative. When they help you reach your goals. You really believe in those IDS ideas. Ideas to help you manage money from IDS. We challenged Hot Shot Garland Dwyer with a Mattel Electronics baseball game. You are all Inside, a tiny thinking computer plays like a team of pros. The computer fires a fastball. <laughs> now a curve. It's a triple. Garland's trying to stretch it home. You're out! Hey, who's in there? <laughs> Electronic baseball. One of nine sports games from the number one name, Mattel Electronics. I needed the mileage of a Toyota Cressida, but it didn't have enough room. What I needed was the room of a Volvo, but it didn't get good enough mileage. What I needed was a Citation. What I didn't need was the price. What I needed was a miracle. What I found was a Fairmont. Ford Fairmont. It makes a world of sense. A world of better ideas coming from Ford. The proud NBC Peacock, right where it belongs, over Veterans Stadium for the World Series. Look at those eyes. Youngster who'll take the bubblegum card tonight, put it under his pillow, and say, someday, I'll be playing in the World Series. That's what it's all about. Larry Bow in the League Championship Series talking about it when they celebrated since I was five years old. I always dreamt about playing in the World Series. Here he is. Right now, it's Gary Maddox to lead it off. Maddox bounced out his first time up. First pitch, he swings and fouls it back. First ball, fastball hitter, and he bears it out. He'll go right after that first pitch, Joe, no question about it. Especially the ball up in the strike zone. That one looked like it might have been out of the strike zone. Gary goes to hack him. There's the strike. I think you'd ever see the daytime where you just go back into rosin bag and throw the rosin bag up to see if he'd swing at it. <laughs> I tell you, that's, that's, that's the reason in all the 600 plate appearances he's walked just 18 times. Boy, is he spread out with two strikes. Look at that. Outside. One ball, two strikes. Tom, you remember him early on when he was with the Giants and that? He used to really wail at the ball it was a free swinger. Then he spread out and he went through a streak for a couple of years where he punched the ball in the right field. I think he's definitely now just a contact. And Joe wants to hit that ball back to the middle, likes to hit the fastball. He'd rather talk about his fielding. He's a tremendous center fielder. Much has been written about him. I thought Ralph Kiner, the Hall of Famer, had a great line. Ralph, describing the Phillies Mets game, said that the earth is two thirds covered by water and the other third is covered by Gary Maddox. That's about right. Got him. So there's one away in the bottom of the fourth. That's the third strikeout for Dennis Leonard. There's the pitch. Might have been a little bit outside. Slider, Tom, or a cut fastball? I think Maddox might have been full. It looked like a slider. Porter wanted the ball away, and Leonard put it right where he was calling for it. Looked like an outstanding pitch because Maddox in that situation is certainly just trying to make contact. Manny Trio. Trio bounced out his first time up. Inside, ball one. You know, Tony, we're talking about in between innings uh, after the last inning on uh, Leonard sailing along very smoothly, and Boa gets on, steals, ba steals a base, and, and for a 20 game winner, an outstanding pitcher, 280 innings. Looked like he just plain lost his composure all of a sudden. And then he hit uh, Rose, and that was it. He went further in the hole. He is a very tough kid, and the word competitor is overused many times, but he is that. And it was unlike him to have that happen to him, and that is not taking anything away from the Phillies because McBride still had hit that song again. <laughs> one ball, one strike on many trio, one out, five, four. Trump. High chopper, tough play. Base hit. 
So Trio is on. It's a base hit, and it brings up Larry Boa. This has got to frustrate the daylights out of a pitcher, Tom. The artificial surface, you make the good pitch a sinker. Well, he made a good pitch, definitely a sinker, and man, he just drives the ball right down in the dirt in front of home plate. The dirt's very hard out there. It really helps Manny. It helps Bake McBride. The guys with the great speed, if they can drive the ball down into that dirt area in front of home plate, the ball is going to bounce so high just the way it did. It's like an automatic base hit. <laughs> Single stole a base and scored on a double by Boone is the batter. Trio's on at first. One man out, five to four. Phillies are leading, bottom of the fourth. That's Re throw. Ruben Amaro, the first base coach. He is very adept at picking up pitch outs right from the manager of the opposing dugout or the catcher, and then he'll go to the pitcher. Bobby Wine on the bench, also very good, will help out Amaro and the base stealers. Side ball one. One man out. One ball, no strikes. Five four. Philadelphia leading Kansas City, bottom of the fourth. Bad throw. There goes Trio. Akins can't pick up the ball. So the Phillies watch his throw. It's a low throw. His right foot gave, didn't it, Tom? It's another classic example of really bad baseball. I think like the rundown that they had when Booney scored. That's a situation where you have a pitcher, Dennis Leonard, doesn't have an outstanding move, has a has an average move, a fair move, and what you've got to do is just try to keep the runner set over there. Don't let him steal. And here he's trying to pick him off. And that's a situation you just give a base away. That's a mental mistake. That's not that situation right there for a pitcher is not a physical mistake. It's a mental mistake. Those are the mistakes that you make when you beat yourself. 1 0 -oh pitch now to Boa. Shortened up as if to bunt. Takes a strike. Brett was back. Pulls him in a couple steps with that fake bunt. 1 and 1 the count on Boa. Trio to score on a base hit. That outfield very shallow. Wilson really guarding the line. There's a good shot of it. It's almost like a double infield. Willie Wilson's arm a little bit better than average. Amos Soto's the best of the trio out there. He's in center field. Clint Hurdle, all oh, average plus, plus, I'd say. Bouncing ball. White nicely in time. Ball is out. Moving to third is Trio. He made the play look easy. There is nobody better in the game of baseball today in the major leagues anyway who has more range than the man at second base, Frank White. He might have saved five runs in a championship series against the Yankees when he made three outstanding plays. He was playing Boa up the middle. Boa pulled it. White still got over. There's Frank White, a little meeting on the mound. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. A behind the scenes look at the Phillies and Royals after the game on KNBC Los Angeles. Five to four, Philadelphia leading bottom of the fourth. Bob Boone, who doubled in a run in that third inning, is the batter. It was a pitch inside. He pulled it down the left field line. Two men out, trios at third. There's the strike. And with a nine spot up right now, Boone, this is a rest spot at times for a pitcher in the National League. Without the DH, you'd have a pitcher up there. But you got nine guys swinging the bats pretty well in the lineup. There's Brett even with a bag. Way outside, almost a wild pitch. One ball and one strike. Kansas City, a two run homer by Otis in his second, jumped out. Two runs as we look at Dallas Green and Herm Sturette. Aikens hit a two run homer in the third. 
Big third inning by the Phillies. Five runs, and that's how we stand. Five four outside. Two and one to count. Two balls and one strike. Jim Fry looking on. Billy Connors. You think they're wondering if Mr. Leonard is losing it, Tom? Well, it's a possibility, Joe. I know that uh, Leonard last time got hurt with a pitch inside and went away with a fastball. And the last two pitches have been sliders off the plate away. So he's been very careful. Keeping Miss the ball away from Boone this time, that's for sure. Now he's getting behind him. He's been ahead of most of the hitters. Leonard has been ahead of the most of the hitters most of the night. This is really only the third time that he's been down to a 2-2-0 two, two and oh or a 3-1 and one count where the hitter is at a distinct advantage. That's the count. Three and one with two outs. Trio at third. Base hit down the right field line. Trio scores. Boom. Rounding first. He's heading for second. He's got his second double of the night. Phillies lead six to four. to Bob last night Tony on the phone I called him over to his house he lives over in New Jersey he had his ice ice around his feet didn't know if he'd be able to play at least I didn't I said how you doing Boone he says fine I said you're playing he said I got this far I'm not quitting now and he didn't you know he had to go to get an x-ray didn't know if he had a broken foot or whatever there's no way that he was going to play when he got to the park today now he's got a double down both lines and I don't think that pitch was away it looked like inside and out it was inside part of the plate and yet he led with the hands and sliced to the right field corner so we're going to have a pitching change a break in the action with the score six to four the Phillies with two men out and we'll be right back after these messages. This is a great house, but it isn't perfect. The owners know it, I know it, and the buyer better know it. Actually, no house is perfect. That's why I encourage people to get our ERA buyer protection plan. This year, ERA will pay out over $4 million in claims for repairs on things like a bad furnace or a water heater. Call and ask about our buyer protection plan. It's another reason why your ERA real estate specialist is the person you need to know in real estate. I'll tell you, I was a born soccer player. Did everything with my feet. Took out the rubbish with my feet, made the bed with my feet, drove my mom crazy. But I finally found something I enjoy doing with my hands, drinking light beer from Miller. Light has a third less calories than the regular beer. It's less filling, but what really makes me happy is the taste. It's terrific. Now, my mum should be happy too. Look, mum, no feet. <laughs> Like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Sunday, start your day with NFL 80, followed by heavy-hitting AFC action, featuring the Badland Bills versus the Never Say Die Dolphins. Check local listings for the game in your area. Beautiful shot of Veterans Stadium here. Some 65,000, and what a ball game they're watching. Right now, the Phillies are leading 6-4. We're in the bottom of the fourth. There are two outs, nobody on, and a new pitcher is Rennie Martin. Big tall right-hander, 6'4", 184. Birthplace, Dover, Delaware, still lives there. Rennie Martin. Martin's 25 years old, Joe. Graduate of Richmond University with a major in finance. Very appropriate. Good fastball, riding kind of fastball. Has an outstanding curveball. Curveball that'll break straight down really hasn't learned how to pitch yet. Uh, he's had such an outstanding curveball through his let's say his youth ball and, and minor league ball the catchers just continually called for it and he never really learned how how to use that curveball. He's just beginning to learn how to use the curveball. Got to the big leagues and found out that you can't throw the curveball every time to each hitter. He learned how to hit those things up here. Pete Rosen and on deck circle really studying Rennie Martin as Lonnie Smith steps in the batter's box. He is one for two. Hits the first pitch of fly ball to right field. Hurdle should have no problem. He does and he makes the catch and that ends the inning. Phillies pick up a run. We complete four innings of baseball here at the score. Philadelphia Phillies six, Kansas City four. And we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Charlotte, will you marry me? 
her last chance at happiness explodes when Clemma returns. I'm going to marry her, Charlotte. Lynn Redgrave stars in Centennial Saturday. But when, Senator? Uh, to that I reply, all things come to him that waits. Uh, uh, Senator, at uh, Shearson Lowe Broads, we disagree. Shearson Lowe Broads? Well, it's one of America's fastest growing investment firms. Really? Well, instead of waiting, Shearson believes in making good things happen. But who could uh, make good things happen for me? Well, for you and over 3,000 new clients a week, the answer is Shearson. I heartily agree. <laughs> <laughs> when the question is money, the answer is Shearson. As if Hawaii didn't already have enough going for it. Soon it will have a new airline. A special airline. The airline that's been selected again as the number one choice for domestic travel by frequent flyers. The airline American. The main reason, service. And starting December 17th, you can get this number one service on the way to Hawaii. We're American Airlines. Doing what we do. Aretha Franklin in concert, Friday after Family Feud. Well, we're back at Veterans Stadium. Joe Garagiola, Tom Seaver, statistician Steve Dans, Tony Kubek. We're going to the fifth. It'll be Hal McRae, George Brett, Willie Mays, Aiken to face Bob Walk, who had the rough start, a shot from the blimp. You think that guy who invented the game, whomever it is, <laughs> and it varies, didn't know what he was doing when he laid out that diamond right there? Mm. He put more frustration into those 90 feet oh, base pass boy. than 60 foot 6 inches than any man could ever create. I know that. I think if Rip Van Winkle was a baseball fan, he could wake up, come here, and somebody would tell him what the artificial surface was, the high salaries, and nothing would change. The DH, I know I you know. would say that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, it's six to four. The Phillies lead over the Royals. Kansas City on two home runs. One by Otis, one by Aiken. Jumped off to a four to nothing lead. McCray, right field, hits it hard. McBride back to the warning track. The ball is carrying up against the wall. He's got it. Ball just kept, kept on going. McBride found that wall and just leans back after he makes the catch. At warning track, a great thing because your feet, you can feel it. Your feet tells your brain, hey, we're getting close to danger here. Let's get out of here. He had enough room, makes the catch. So now it's George Brett. First inning, he fouled and Schmidt at third, and then he was called out on strikes on a wicked breaking ball from Bob Walk. That was in the third. Kansas City, four runs, five hits. They've committed one error. That by Leonard, a wild pickoff throw. Philly, six runs, six hits. Brett, fly ball, right center field. Maddox back to the wall again. He oh, no! Fly play by Gary Maddox. He just might be the best in the major leagues, and he might have proved it with that catch. Walker started Brett out three times on fastballs, and it looks like he got that one up and George just a little bit where George couldn't get it all. Maddox, of course, Tony, as you say, an outstanding, if not the most outstanding center field in baseball, makes a beautiful catch. Well, I think when you watch Maddox and see where he starts from, because he plays relatively shallow, and he was shading Brett about, well, he's about straight away on him, so he had a long way to go to right center field. But there are two outs on two balls hit fairly well. And now it'll be Willie Mays Aiken, a fly ball and a two run home run in the third. They both hit two first pitches. It'll be interesting to see what Willie Mays Aikens does. Well, he throws a ball up there that they don't go after, so it's one ball, no strikes with two outs. Philly six, Kansas City four. We're in the top of the fifth. Two balls and no strikes to count. You know, World Series time, a great voice, Mel Allen. We got some flashbacks. Mel Allen was going to stir some memories. We've got some beautiful flashbacks that, well, I know you're going to enjoy because I don't care what ball is hit or what play, it always reminds you of another play. And I know when I was growing up, and I hope Mel appreciates this, it wasn't official as Mel Allen was doing it. How about that? All right. Can I get a chance to see one? When this third out is made. Two balls, one strikes, two outs to Willie Mays Aiken. Breaking ball goes two and two. 
work something off. So Walk has shown a few more off-speed pitches than I thought he might today, even though he, and he stuck with it, even though Otis sent one out. He gets up, so Willie Mays Aikens goes down on a curveball or slider. Walk goes out, six to four, Phillies lead. Let's go back to a fall classic flashback, Babe Ruth in the 1932 series. The score is tied at four all. Babe Ruth has pointed to the bleachers in Chicago's Wrigley Field, taunted by the Cubs. Charlie Root pitches. Root swings. There's a drive going to deep center field. Going, going. It is into the center field bleachers. Oh, great. Fried stereo. Don't worry. We've got insurance. Oh, Mom, the stereo will cost a bundle to replace today. Our Allstate policy will cover it. Right. If you buy Allstate's new replacement cost coverage on contents, we'll replace most personal property at today's prices. We'll replace it. Oh, we can get a new stereo? But this time, let's put it there, away from the fireplace. You're in good hands with Allstate. And that's a promise from us, the good hands people. See this little baby? No other pocket camera does what it does. It's unique, because only the new Kodak Ectralite cameras have built-in Sensolite Flash. Sensolite Flash turns itself on and flashes automatically when you need more light. It even turns itself off. You'll never worry about flash again. These new cameras with Sensolite Flash are the easiest to use Kodak pocket cameras ever. I trust my stories to cameras and film from Kodak, America's storyteller. Back. What's going on? Lunch. Burgers, huh? Nah, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Coach says the Colonel only uses fresh quality chicken. Coach wants us to eat right. He says Kentucky Fried Chicken's a great meal at a sensible price. Smart coach. Smart enough to know what my boys like best. Right on, Hank. It's so nice. So good about a meal. So good about Kentucky Fried Chicken. Series records, Babe Ruth number two behind Mantle with 18. Your sidekick, neighbor, Yogi Berra. 2-0. Two, oh. two balls, no strikes to Pete Rose. And that Phillies five-run third with that got him back in the ball game started off peacefully as Trio grounded out. Then Boa single. Ground ball, Washington will have a tough play. A little tricky hop. Long throw, he's got him. One out. Well, I want to remind you, Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, games people play. You'll see the World Cannonball Championships, soupy sales and custard pie throwing. Seaver's been on the receiving end of those at times. Something he's no stranger to, skateboard fever strikes. The hottest thing on four wheels and more this Thursday on games people play. We hope you'll watch right here on NBC. One out, Phillies lead six to four. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Ready, Martin, relieved. Dennis Leonard, it's Mike Smith. He has struck out, he has walked and scored a run. One ball. Two balls, no strike. One thing Smith has done, one of his first years in the big leagues, he struck out 180 times. This year he went just over, over 100 slightly. He appears, Tom, to have moved off the plate a little bit. Well, definitely this year he's moved off the plate. Tony. And over the last, say, three or four years, Mike has become very selective at the plate. He used to come up and be hacking at everything. He has become a much more disciplined hitter, and he knows he gets up there and he's a much better hitter if he gets in a situation with two balls and no strikes. And he'll he'll let a pitcher get behind him, whereas before he used to go up and just start swinging. But he knows that he, if he gets that pitcher in the hole, and he's so strong, and he can be more selective, he's a much more effective hitter. Become a very intelligent hitter in the last three or four years in the big leagues. Outstanding power. Sitting here, sitting here right now in a three, three and one situation. He's got a pitcher right where he wants it. He walks him on a three and one pitch, so Schmitz on with one out, and the Phillies leading by two over the Kansas City Royals in game number one of the 1980 World Series. Now it's Baker McBride, and listen to the hand. He hit a three-run home run in the third. Here's the home run 
swing the last time up. Leonard looks like he gets the ball out over the plate, and he really goes out after it. You know, the scouting report on McBride is to see that pitch, I guess, is that he's a high ball hitter. That ball was down in the strike zone. Looked like it was down, Jordan, right in the middle of the plate. Looked like a good pitch to hit for him. No, he didn't really get it out, didn't really did, didn't get it in either. Look, it was right out there, a good pitch to hack out. One ball, says Harry Wendell Stat, the home plate umpire, to make McBride with Schmidt at first base. Phil six, Kansas City four. The Royals had a four run lead, a couple of two run home runs by Willie Mays Aikens and Amos Otis. But this man at the plate, Bake McBride in the three run shot. Amaro, the first base coach for the Phillies, as Aikens holds Schmidt out. One and all, one out. Stadium in Philadelphia. One ball, one strike to McBride. Schmidt does not attempt steals off at just 17 times this year, but he's been successful 12 times being held by Aikens. And he'll go if he gets that walking lead, Tony. If you let him walk off there where he can get a good start and get going, he'll steal a base. Runs very well for a big man. One ball, one strike to McBride. Now it's two and one, and there's a big hole right now with McBride ahead in the count between Frank White, the second baseman, and Willie Mays Aiken, the first baseman. They play McBride about straight away in the outfield, about the same in the infield, but he can slither that ball through the right side with his pitch. He hits it the opposite way. Base hit for McBride. Schmidt will hold at second as Wilson relays the throw home. So, Rennie Martin got behind two and one. McBride slashed it to left field. Two on, one out, and it's the ball. Martin's a breaking ball pitcher and gets behind in a situation, has to throw a fastball, tries to run the ball away from McBride. He simply punched it in the hole between George Brett and Ewell Washington, Washington at short. Now, time will be called, and I'm going to let you talk about this guy because it's. One of your dear friends, Billy Connors, the pitching coach, going out town. Well, you know, he is one of my one of my best friends that I do have in baseball. He worked for the Mets organization. We were teammates when I played for the Mets for for a couple of years. Came out of the Cubs organization. Has done an outstanding job over here for the Royals this year. His first job here in the big leagues as a pitching coach. And where did he come from? He came from the Phillies minor league system. So he know not only is he done a fine job for the Philly, for the Royals over here, knows most of the young Philly pitchers as well. There's another guy sitting on that Royals bench 26 years in organized baseball finally made it to a World Series Jimmy Schaefer mm. a lot of bus rides. So now with two men on base Schmidt is on second McBride is on first there's Jimmy Fry on Billy Connors. Lazinski is up he's 0 for 2 a strikeout and a flyout. The Phillies lead 6 to 4 in the bottom of the fifth. Martin's pitch look out it got the ball. He is not too mobile at the plate, but there's no way anybody's going to get out of the way of that pitch. So the bases are loaded with one out, and it's Gary Maddox. Here's the pitch again. It just sails right in. The bull just takes, well, he takes it off the side there, about maybe a 28 calorie bite. But it'll be interesting to see now what happens with Maddox, who is a first ball hitter. What will Rennie Martin do? Well, as Tom said, first ball, fastball hitters, and the fans are getting riled up once again. They're in tight at the corners. Brett Nakins, the middle of the diamond, double play down. Martin will pitch for the windup. One out. Too high, ball one. One out. The bases are loaded. Maddox facing Rennie Martin. He's grounded out and struck out. One strike. George Brett at third. That was Schmidt, the runner. McBride at second. Lazinski at first for the Phillies. They came back after being down by four runs. Full with a single. Stole four runs behind. Rose hit by a pitch. And the fans got riled up just like this. Good curveball. Wicked curveball. 
curveball by Rennie Martin. Tom Martin, we've seen him before. It's now one ball, two strikes. Cannot get by without getting his curveball over the plate. That one was a bad pitch, but as good as it is, as hard as it is, he'll get guys to swing at that curveball. Well, he's been better getting behind people, too, Tony, and he's got to get to a situation where he can use that curveball because it is outstanding. Hit deep to left field, but it is hooking foul. One ball, two strikes, one out. That's a curveball as a catcher. I'd go out there and say that was a hanger. <laughs> it just hung. And he waited for it. And he was going to tee off on it. I think Randy Martin already knows that it was a hanger. Look at that stat right there. Hit 750. Driving in mid from third with less than two out. That is outstanding for Maddox. One ball, two strikes, one out. The base is loaded. June two. You're pitching right now, Tom. Your curveball's not snapping off. What do you do with the bases loaded? Well, you got to try get get a ground ball here. You're trying to save the run from third. Very difficult guy really to strike out. Personally, I throw a slider away, but Mark doesn't throw the slider. Fast fastball up and ball. in. It was a fastball. He goes to three and two as Porter asked for the appeal down to the American League umpire at first base, Bill Conco. He says, uh oh, the crowd three and two, and the crowd's on its feet. What out. Fly ball in field. Set star run. Schmidt is tagging up. Wilson with a throw home. He goes to third. So now the Phillies have the lead, seven to four. Maddox drives in another run, seven to four. Maddox gets the sacrifice fly. Wilson not a bad arm. There you see Schmidt tagging up. You see, unlike the championship series, he did not leave early. And you can see the third base coach Lee Elia pointing him at the right. But Pride was also tagging up. Had Wilson thrown a rainbow home, Pride would have been on third or would might have tried it. Trio up now. One ball, no strikes with two outs. Philly seven, Kansas City four. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Like the third that started peacefully. Rose went out, and then Schmidt walked. McBride single. Lazinski was hit by pitch. Maddox sacrifice fly RBI. Two and all oh, the trio. Ready, Mark. And he has got to be experiencing some first game, first appearance, World Series jitters. No question, he's got to be a little nervous, Tony. Eight out of ten hitters that have come up there, first pitch has been ball one. He's been behind almost everybody. Hasn't been in a situation where he can use his curveball, and a hitter can just sit on his pitch. And he did. He went after a fastball, but popped it up to the right side. A 2 0 pitch, Willie Mays Aiken. So, Ruddy Martin retires the Phillies, but not after they'd scored one more run. So, after five here at that stadium in game number one of the 1980 World Series, the score is the Phillies seven, Kansas City four. Introducing the new world car, Ford Escort, with better ideas from around the world at your fingertips. Road hugging four wheel independent suspension, front wheel drive, precise rack and pinion steering, stabilizer bar for tight turns. New power-efficient engine for easy freeway cruising and higher gas mileage ratings than Rabbit, Accord, Corolla Hatchback. Ford Escort, built in America to take on the world. A bright red fire truck, a blue calliope, a yellow moon, a pink balloon, a golden Dixie jamboree. Yes, America's true colors come through on GE. GE TV brings you America's true colors, vivid and lifelike. And with GE's special VIR2 circuit, the color is automatically adjusted. Yes, America's true colors come through on GE. GE, we bring good things to life. You're the Pepsi generation, the spirit of today. And with every taste of life that's new, Kill 
killed his wife. They killed his child. And now he rides for revenge. Clint Eastwood is the outlaw Josie Wales Sunday. Two up for the Royals in the top of the sixth. It'll be Daryl Porter, followed by Amos Otis. Hit to be followed by Clint Hurdle. And coming in, the suggestion was the Phillies, as a result of an exhausting series with Houston, would be lethargic and fatigued. Instead, it's the Royals who appear to be playing tentative baseball, and the Phillies were making things happen, leading seven to four. As we start the sixth, Bob Walk looks stronger than ever. He's retired six in a row since his teammates gave him a lead to protect. Tony? All right, thank you, Brian. Order Otis Hurdle, seven to four. The Phillies over Kansas City. The game. You can never say it about a World Series game or any game. Looked like it might get out of hand when the Royals took a four-run lead. But Boa and Rose triggered it, and then McBride with a three-run home run got it back in the head. One ball, no strikes. Porter has walked twice in this ball game. Amos Otis on deck. With all the paraphernalia, pine tire rags. Let it donut and let it bat towels. Bob Walk. Two home runs it up so far in the ball game, but he has struggled back. Three and one. Tom, what kind of pitching pattern has he gone to now? He, it looked like when they scored the runs, and obviously it's got to recharge a pitcher. But he's coming pretty good with fastballs now. Well, maybe playable. Schmidt. Scott. Well, Tony, what Brian said when we came into the inning, retired six in a row, and really seems to be getting his feet on the ground. Obviously, the runs that the Phillies attacked on the board for him have helped. But he's coming at the at the Royals with fastballs, good hard stuff. He's got to throw hard stuff. Here you see Mike Schmidt. Flagging down Darrell Porter's pop fly. It looked like it was going to go in the stands and came back to him, got it right along the railing. Schmidt, of course, not standing, defensive player in perfect position. But it looks like Walks getting his feet on the ground, and the things that he thing that he wants to do now is to make the Royals hit the ball. Get make them, if they're going to do something, make them do it. Don't give them a free pass. Don't give them a walk. Control really is the key that he has to have now. Amos Sotis with a home run and a single. Seven to four, the Phillies lead over Kansas City. Well, every inning that walk gives them from here on in is a plus for the Phillies and Dallas Green, and especially that beleaguered pitching staff. They were tired out. You didn't like that word beleaguered, Joe? No, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Tug, Tug McGraw has to be looking to get a complete game to get some rest. Uh -huh. One ball, one strike to A.O. Amos Sotis. There's one out. We're in the top of the sixth. Bob Walk, one of only three rookies, in case you tuned in late, ever to start a World Series game. Over Cleveland Alexander and Joe Black for the Dodgers in 1952. Fouled out of play by Otis. One ball, two strikes. Amos Otis on a home run in that second inning really didn't look like he drove the ball, but once he touched it off, it just seemed to carry. Reached out and almost one handed it and Lonnie Smith could do nothing in left field but just watch it go over that one handed follow through is a trademark of hitters who have been coached by Charlie Lau he feels you get more extension with it his prize pupil of course George Brett outside two and two in fact Charlie Lau now the hitting instructor I often wondered in fact the first thing I thought of when I saw that game in Yankee Stadium when Brett hit the home run off Gossage Charlie Lau sitting in the Yankee dugout what went through his mind I'll tell you what went through his mind he wasn't going to play in the World Series that's what went through his mind two and two popped up right side trio back McBride calls him off there are two outs well right now I remind you of this this telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience any publication reproduction retransmission or other use of the pictures descriptions and accounts of this game without the expre express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited I almost got through that without making a mistake until I hit express did you notice that Tom? <laughs> two outs Clint Hurdle one strike with two outs Phil seven Kansas City four we're in the sixth. Hurdle is flied out and single to left. 
Walk is now retired eight in a row. We've already told you many times about the rough start he had. One and one. So many of the Kansas City players and also the American League players were overshadowed by Brett's outstanding year, Jackson's and several others. But here's another guy who very quietly hit 290 plus after they, after they thought after a well, a relatively bad year, his first year when he was so highly touted, he thought he might forever struggle in the minor leagues. 2-1. Did he go? He must have gotten a piece of it because he fouled it off. Harry Wendelstad wasn't sure. He went down to the third base umpire. See if we can see it when it sounded like he ticked it. No, oh, hit the shin guard. The That's shin what guard. I heard. Yeah. I was going by sound. Went down to the third base umpire, American Leaguer Don Dinking. He said, "Yeah, he didn't check in time. Could be trouble." Boat is right on the two and two oh, count. Yeah. Almost a bad throw by Bo, who's had some arm problems, but Rose scoops it out. So three up, three down. You know, when we travel around during the uh, summer, we ask get asked a lot of questions. Tony Kubek is always asked about a particular play in Pittsburgh. That's not quite a flashback. Here it is, Tony. The Yankees are leading seven to four. One man on, nobody out. Last of the eight. Bobby Shantz pitches to Bill Burton. A ground ball hit to short. It hits Tony Kubek in the throat. Here's another look at it in slow motion. This play opened the floodgates for the Pirates to go on to win the World Championship. Here's to good friends. Tonight is kind of special. The beer Building inspector. Hey, what are you guys doing here? I didn't believe you two could build your own house. Yeah, well, don't look. It's not finished. Well, I guess we'll just take our lone brown go home. Well, maybe one quick look around. <laughs> when you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brown. What are you going to do when you finish this place? Just what I'm doing right now. knows a man sweats more than a woman. That's why a man needs Right Guard. Right Guard has a male effectiveness, a formula so strong, more men count on it to help stop perspiration odor every day. Right Guard knows there's a difference between you. Men perspire more. And that's what Right Guard's for. Tony, I have to ask you, as we have this great shot of Vet Stadium, don't they ever ask you about the two home runs you hit in Milwaukee? Uh, every time I go to Pittsburgh and many other places, that's what people remember. Larry Boa facing Reddy Martin, the second pitcher. Dennis Leonard had a comfortable 4 to nothing lead, two home runs, but then he lost it. McBride, a three-run homer, but Boa is the guy who let it off. One ball, uh, making two strikes now on Larry Boa, but it was Boa in that third inning who singled the center Stole second, surprising everybody, I think. Shook up Leonard and went on to score five. Popped up behind old plate. Porter with a mask off. Wendelstadt right there. One out. Seven to four. Phil's over the Royals. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Game one of the 1980 World Series. And while we got a chance here, as Boone comes in, he's got two doubles. It is really a status symbol, Tom, when you have an assistant in the booth, and I think we ought to give a little credit <laughs> to Paul Moscow, one of the pitchers. That's Steve Dance, the far left. That guy you know. Tom Moscow, Seaver. Here he is. Yeah. Put your head out there, Moscow. What Paul is doing he is in communication with a man with a radar gun and some observations down behind home plate. They are relayed to Moscow, who's charting pitches, and as the series progresses, as Boone goes one ball, no strike, we'll be able to tell you a little bit about pitching patterns, whether or not they change, where a guy might hit the ball. With a name like his, though, you better say Paul Moscow if you're going to relay anything. You keep saying related to Moscow, we're going to have a hotline number called or something. Paul we, Moscow. We missed that this summer, didn't we? 7-4, <laughs> one ball, one strike, one out. Bob Boone now goes two balls to strike. Booney doubled. And an RBI double in that big five run third. Scored. He doubled also in the fourth. Three and 
Three and one. Mark behind once again. They play a game here in Philadelphia with attendance, and they got two numbers up there 67,342 or 65,791. A lot of people here enjoying quite a ball game. You will not find an empty seat. Boone way ahead. What is that? Call strike three and two. There it is, a very beautiful modern multi purpose stadium. In fact, on the off day yesterday, the Philadelphia Eagles in the big second half Sunday. Short hop by White. Over to Aikens, booms down. Two outs. I'll tell you, the umpires in some excellent positioning right there as White throws out Boone. But the second base umpire, Paul Pryor, circled around to get the perfect view to see whether it was trapped or caught. And the ball hit to White. There's Pryor. He's had World Series experience. Paul Pryor. He's from the National League. So they finally retire Boone. He's two for three, and it's Lonnie Smith. Smith had a part in that third as he takes a ball from Rennie Martin. He singled, but then he got caught in a rundown between second and third while he was being retired. Boone is the guy who scored. Fouled out of play by Smith, one and one. This man has tremendous speed. In fact, he'll get some votes for Rookie of the Year, I believe, Tom. He had an outstanding year. I mean, tremendous speed on the bases. Something that really makes them. The Philly club go. You put Rose behind him, and then you got the bombers, two bombers, Luzinski and Schmidt, Luzinski coming up after him. Looks like Dallas Green loves him. He's a fine, outstanding prospect. Should have a fine career. Chop, Brett behind the back. He almost lost it. He double clutches. Nah, -uh. Lonnie Smith's speed as Brett did not have control of the ball, and we just saw the speed of Smith. It really emphasizes the importance of speed and. Not only offensive and defensive, but here in an offensive situation, one little bobble by Brett, a guy like Lonnie Smith with his speed, it becomes no contest. Brett might have a shot at him if he can get the ball cleanly out of his glove and get it away quickly with a good strong throw. But he bobbled it just for a second, and that could be the difference over at first base. We've got time being called right now, some debris out there in left field, so Willie Wilson is going to retrieve it. Is that inning after Bo had single stolen second, a pitch from Dennis Leonard, and Pete gave no ground. You know, it reminds me of watching Pete do that. Reggie Jackson in that rundown with the in, in Yankee Stadium when the Dodgers and the Yankees were in the playoffs. Uh -huh. the, the double play throw from Bill Russell going to first base. Reggie's uh, Reggie turn, turning right into the ball, looked like he turned into the ball. No way, I think that Pete tried to get out of the way of that pitch. And they are very conscious of the man at first base, Lonnie Smith, and with Rose, the left hander, protecting him, he's going to be going sooner or later. Philly 7, Kansas City 4, snap throw. Here's Romaro after a couple of, he's the coach, after a couple of throws over at home, he calls timeout often, talks to Lonnie Smith, and he picks up a move or a pitch out. He stole 33 bases. He's gone. The throw from Porter, UL Washington, makes the tag. He's out. Well, he was 33 for 46 in the regular season. But not today, as it's a three up, three down inning after Smith single, he was thrown out. Rose protecting him. Porter, just a classic throw. He really gets into it and gives the infield UL Washington a good ball to handle, and that's it. After six, Philly seven, Kansas City four, and we'll be back after these messages from your local station. The man who started it all is back. It's the Steve Allen Comedy Hour with Lucille Ball, Steve Martin, and George Kennedy. One of TV's all-time greats returns Saturday. That used to be us, always rushing. Right. And that used to be us, always standing in line. Right. On DWA, we got our return trip boarding passes on our flight out, so we go straight to the gate. Right. We even reserved our favorite seats in advance. Right. And nobody can get you through the airport faster than TWA. Right. Since we have our seats together, we can work together. Wrong. You're gonna like us, TWA. You're gonna like us. MaxiCare thinks it's time to cut the aggravation out of group health insurance. So we cut out claim forms, and we cut out annual deductibles. MaxiCare cuts the cost of preventive care, too. Routine exams and well child care are just $2. And if you do get sick, MaxiCare pays 100% of hospitalization. 
MaxiCare provides maximum medical care, not paperwork. Ask your employer about MaxiCare, the new generation in health care. Engelbert Humperdinck in concert tonight after Family Feud. Joe Garagiola with Tony Kubek and Tom Seaver here in Philadelphia where the Phillies are leading by the score of 7-4. to four. We're in the top half of the seventh inning and it'll be Frank White and UL Washington and Willie Wilson for Kansas City. There's a strike. Walk has really been tough. Nine men in a row. Frank White fly to right and bounced out. Base hit up the middle and there goes the streak that Walk had going and White is on. Here it is. It didn't take Frank White long to jump over Walk and break the nine consecutive retired streak. I'll tell you that follow through is not a good one but it might have saved him from taking one off the kneecap or shin because that ball was really drilled. So White is on and here is UL Washington. 65,791 here in the ballpark. The attendance, the largest World Series crowd since the fourth game in the 1964 World Series. It's low ball one. Has to be the largest crowd ever in Pennsylvania for a baseball game. One ball, no strikes. There's a shot of it. And tomorrow night, Carlton against Gura. Bullpen for the Phillies gets busy. Foul out of play. One ball, one strike. There's Sochet, left hander. Kevin Sochet. That's Tuck McGraw sitting right behind him. He'd like the day off, I gotta believe, Tom. No question he'd like the day off. Worked very hard in that championship series. Very hard down the last month of the season or so really is the fellow that came on in the last half of the season saved it for the Philadelphia Phillies hadn't been for Tug you can say it for a lot of people in that ball club but at the end of the season had not been for Tug they wouldn't be here. Line drive left field Lonnie Smith played it perfectly. UL Washington is out number one in the seventh inning the ball was hit hard but defense well. That's what the charts are all about they got him positioned perfectly hit well as you said Joe but on the first step once again Lonnie Smith fell and almost went to the turf. Willie Wilson the battery so for three but he struck out in the first and he bounced out second the first and the third he was out third the first and the fourth really taking a good look at his third base coach McKenzie. It's a seven to four score Philadelphia's out in front. It's a strike. Running for the base hit, no sacrifice here. He is not yet a proficient butter. If he ever gets that down, can you imagine what he'll do with about 230 base hits this year? People are down there talking. Tony said if he if he could learn to bunt, very difficult to bunt. I grant you on AstroTurf, but if he could learn to bunt, they say he hit at least 350. This is strike. Every time I hear that. And it, it just reminds me like if a guy would say if Sinatra could only learn how to sing opera. And here's a guy <laughs> with the years that he's had if he learned how to bunt. Been switch hitting just three years. There's White being held by Rose. And it was Chuck Hiller who was a coach for Herzog of Kansas City who really worked with Willie Wilson. Outside. One ball, two strikes. He just convinced him that all you have to do is hit the ball down, hope it bounces twice. You got yourself a base hit. He's a cut and slash guy. He only walked 28 times this season, so it's hard to give him a base on balls. Here's the one two pitch. There goes the runner. It's low and inside. Booney can't make the play, and White is on at second base. Stolen base. Seven to four is the score. Phillies are out in front. We're in the seventh. One man out, 2 2 the count on Willie Wilson, and now they switch signs. There you see it. Well, the Royals have six men in their starting lineup today who are base dealers, and you just saw White do something. Tough play for Boone. White did something about like Boa, because they're down three, but that's one of the ways this game has changed. For artificial surface, you build your team for speed. Down the left field line, Lonnie Smith is there. He's going to make the play. He does. 
So Wilson is out. White remains at second there, two away. The batter is Hal McRae, who walked in the first inning. He single and scored in the third, and he fly to right. Tom, while we got a chance here, we saw Paul Moscow. What are you two guys doing over there? You well, got what we're doing, Joe, really kind of keep track of all the pitching and Paul doing some of the stat work for me to find out how these guys are working, like walk walking coming out here in the in the seventh inning. Now through the first six innings, there's only been one hitter that he started him off with a curveball. That was Hal McCray. He's the only hitter in the entire lineup all the way through into the seventh inning that he started off somebody with a curveball. Hal McCray. And here we are. Everybody else has either been good hard fastball or hard slider. Now those hitters on the Royal bench have to know that know that that's what they're going to get the first pitch they're going to get a good good fastball hard fastball good slider every time they go up there. Moscow is actually charting like he would if he were pitching tomorrow. Curveball misses. Is that about what he's doing Tom. Almost exactly the way he'd, let's say he'd be, he'd be pitching now. What is a normal procedure the pitcher that would be pitching the following day would be keeping the chart on the bench. Now for the pitching coach and for the pitcher that is pitching today and for reference for future times that you pitch. One ball one strike on McRae. He takes it low two balls and a strike two out seven to four seventh inning Frank White is on at second base. Bob Walk a non roster pitcher this spring. to first base there's a throw that ends the inning end of seven Philadelphia seven Kansas City four we talked about Reggie Jackson using body English remember 1977 let's have a fall classic flashback. The Dodgers are leading three to one. Thurman Munson on second, Reggie Jackson on first. Lou Pinella lines to Bill Russell, who steps on second, throws to Garvey. The ball hits Jackson, and here comes Tommy Lasorda. Good right away. Tommy, listen. First of all, the ball's a line drive, right? Yeah. Okay. The guy picks up the ball. He thinks Russell's going to catch the ball. Now he starts heading back towards first. And Billy throws the ball to first. I mean, what do you want? He was standing there. to drive in an old Model T that belonged to my dad. We counted on Pennzoil to take care of the engine. Today, Pennzoil does even more, because now it saves gasoline. Pennzoil has added gas savings to its regular multi-weight oils, and they've done it at their regular price. So you don't have to spend extra money to get extra miles. Gas-saving Pennzoil. Quality in every extra mile. Rodeo cowboy never settling down. Don't you ever get lonesome from your traveling around. When the day's work is done and the competition was a little rough, it's good to get back to some easy riding and a friend. That's what friendly skies are all about. I spent the whole day on my feet. I wish I could say that. Spread your wings, fly away. Nothing's all that far. Sunshine. Got three fingers. Reach for a star. What was that bull's name? Bad medicine. And he was. There's friendship on high. Where the eagle dares to fly. Friend, that's the nicest ride I've had in a long time. By the Philly sky. Rodeo cowboy, there you go once again. But I know you'll be back right now. Pete Rose in the bottom half of the seventh inning. The Phillies are out in front by three. Seven to four is the score. George Brett calling it a foul ball. They call it a foul ball. I'll tell you, both it, umpires had to a little bit right there, Joe. Yes, they did. Wendelstad was waiting for Denkinger and finding the teamwork really meshed because that's what you don't want is a double decision. Here it is. Check swing. Wendelstadt is waiting to see whether it where it goes. It's his call before it gets to the bag. Third base. Afterwards. 
And Wendell Stapp made the call right there. Boy, I'll tell you one thing. They waited and made sure that was so important in that call. The umpire's nightmare is to have one guy call it safe and the other one call it out or call it fair or call it foul. Get that double decision. You, you wake this up to Japanese, though. Isn't that a classic picture? And I've forgotten who the umpire was. Sliding into second base, two umpires converge on the base. One with a safe sign and one with a hand raised for the out. Yeah. Outside, no no, says Wendelstead. We're all getting the dirty to go. Luciano <laughs> over here. <laughs> I don't think he likes us anymore. <laughs> One ball and two strikes. Pete Rose. Rose 0 for 2. Hit by a pitch, came around to score, and that five run third. Bouncing ball to UL Washington. One out. One away, and it brings up Mike Schmidt. Schmidt struck out in the first. He walked and scored. He scored when McBride hit that home run, a three-run homer. And Schmidt walked and scored in the fifth. Sacrifice fly by Maddox. Tom, you've talked a little bit about a Kansas City Royal staff with pitcher Schmidt. How do you pitch a Schmidt? Well, again, Tony, depends on your throwing. Selective over the years. Uh, if you're throwing well, I personally find throwing well, try and throw him hard stuff in. Any any big home run hitter, you don't want him to let him extend his arms. Now I haven't faced him since he's moved off the plate as far as he is. This is gonna be new for me when I pitch against him next year. Because when I faced him, he was up closer to the plate the way he has been throughout his career. Striding into the ball more now. Going into the ball more. I would throw him what I try to do is try and throw him hard stuff in. You know he's going to kill your mistake. He's an out. He's an outstanding mistake hitter. If you hang a pitch, get a pitch where he can drive it. He is not going to miss it. He's that kind of an outstanding pitch, and you can see how selective he's been. He's already got two walks today. But I personally try and throw hard stuff in, run it in toward the small part of that bat, run sliders away, keep the ball down, don't give him the pitch out over the plate to drive. Two balls and one strike, and there's a foul ball. That's out of play. Two balls and two strikes, one man out. When a guy, a hitter moves off the plate, and again I refer to Charlie Lau, it gives you a split, split second longer as you watch the replay as Schmidt fouls it off. He's going the opposite way a little bit more, but it gives you that split second longer to wait on the ball. Well, that was a great replay, too, Tony. You can see the extension of his arms, and Mike is a, is a huge man. I mean, he can hit the ball out very easily to right center, right field. Bounces low three and two the count one out nobody on seven four Philadelphia leading we're in the bottom half of the seventh inning. It's quite a stat we just saw. He broke Eddie Matthews record for third base. Eddie had 47. Three two pitch. That's fouled out of play. Tomorrow night, Steve Carlton against Larry Gura. In this game that Bob Walk has given Dallas Green, I tell you, it's almost like just a, a big shot in the arm. It's everybody talking about the pitching staff and, and how they had a battle, the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Montreal Expos to win it, and how they battled Houston. Now here, trying to give Carlton an extra day's rest, and they're three runs ahead in the seventh. Brett to his left can get it. Washington deep in a hole. No way. And Mike Schmidt, for some reason, stopped. And then he went through. He almost got thrown out on that. He thought that ball was in left field. He thought Ruben Amaro was giving him the take her easy stone. You can see him right now. Or he may have thought he said, round the bag, it's through. But that'll give you the idea of the aggressiveness of the Kansas City infielders. Here's our left center field camera. Right there, Schmidt thought, or just after he goes out of the pitch, he thought Amaro say rounded. It's in left field. <laughs> UL Washington showed his speed and quickness by stopping it from going to left. Ball just just get by George Brett. Strong arm, Washington. Of course, bet. not seeing him play very often. Outstanding strong arm. <laughs> Mike looked like he got caught with his hand in the cookie jar when he got about ten feet from first base, didn't he? <laughs> Your guy in Cincinnati, though, Concepcion, has that play where he bounces it on the artificial surface and it picks up speed, which is a good play. I'm not sure it's the way to get his throw over there. I tell you, the games we saw him, it worked. Strike one. 
not going to argue with you. Today's <laughs> Columbus Day. <laughs> no, no, that was. I don't argue on my holidays. Two days ago. <laughs> One reason might be that David Concepcion's out in Los Angeles with about a 10-inch scar on his elbow. He just had some bone chips taken out of that elbow. That might be one reason he's been doing that, too. Pitch out, nothing going on. You know, I'm mentioning Houston, and maybe we waited a bit too long, but certainly congratulations to Bill Verdon and that Houston ball club. What a tremendous, tremendous season they had. And doggone it, I heard Gossage, whether he was misquoted or not, say the whole season was wasted. Baloney. The year he had, you don't waste a season like that on the one pitch. The Houston Astros battling all the way. Tragedy. Lost J.R. Richards, Cedeno, and kept battling. The Yankees, what a year they had. Just a tremendous year for baseball. It was Kansas City Royals. Just kind of laid in the bushes, and when it came time to play, they played. They were 20 games in front in August. Swept the Yankees three, but it's a good season. My congratulations to Houston, New York, certainly here. Line drive, face hit. Mike Schmidt stops at second. Whoops, get back there. That's a play that a lot of right fielders and shortstops are pulling now, where the shortstop will fade back in the cutoff position between third and second and the right field will throw for the second base back. Washington come up breaking ball up to the strike zone top a little bit out over the plate. Boy when he hits the ball with that chopping downswing it just takes off. He fools a lot of outfielders with balls he hits. Greg Luzinski the batter that's the third base hit for Big McBride who's had a big night a three run homer and a single in the fifth a single in the seventh he's three for four. Luzinski's 0 for two last time hit by a pitch. The score seven to four. Philadelphia's out in front. We're in the bottom of the seven. High ball one. It's one man out. Mike Schmidt at second. Bake McBride is on at first. Luzinski, the designated hitter. Misses. Two and oh. Zinski's first shot at the D.H. You wonder what he's doing underneath the, or in the dugout. Heard him say to Billy DeMars, he said, I may go to the batting cage between the bats and hit a few balls in the batting cage. There's the strike. Hal McRae is a D.H. He has made a science out of it. It's not as easy as it sounds because you've got to stay in that ball game when you're not in the ball game. City bullpen action. Brzezinski with the count of two balls and two strikes, one out. Phillies leading 7 4, bottom of the seven. Good fastball. Luzinski is out on strike, so there are two away. Schmidt remains at second, McBride at first. Rennie Martin, who we talked about being a curveball pitcher, simply throwing the fastball right by Greg Luzinski, who's not too shabby a fastball hitter, but he's keeping the ball away from him. There's the action, Marty Patton in the Kansas City bullpen. Martin did a very good job that time keeping the ball in the outside half of the plate to Luzinski, which he's very tough with two men on base. Another tough hitter, Gary Maddox. First pitch, he hits a high fly ball, center field. Otis is there. Otis makes the play, and that ends the inning. So at the end of seven complete innings of baseball here, it's the Philadelphia Phillies, seven, Kansas City, four. Unforgettable. In 1955, this voice and this car were destined to become legends. For 1981, the legend lives on in a new heritage Thunderbird and in a new voice named Cole. Unforgettable. Legend lives on because the thunder is still there. There's a world of better ideas coming from Ford. Oh, we should have Baz like this back home. Mm -hmm. Our money. What? It's out in my suit. Oh. Do you carry traveler's checks? Yes, Citicorp. 
Well, refunds are no problem almost anywhere in the world. Oh. There's even a large city bank right near the Imperial Palace. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Uh, Yama. Uh, Mr. Yama, my wife, Ella. <laughs> That's all right. Don't get up. <laughs> Travel the world with us, Citicorp Traveler's Checks. Here's your chance to get the official 1980 World Series souvenir program, the same one sold at the ballpark. It's a collector's item commemorating the 77th Fall Classic. Send check or money order for $3 to World Series Program, Box 1980, Norwood, New Jersey, 07648. It's filled with World Series glamour, history, and statistics. That's World Series Program, Box 1980, Norwood, New Jersey. Act now. Quantities are limited. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. A crowd of almost 66,000 on hand at Veterans Stadium and a big inning on tap for one Bob Walk. In this inning, he will face three, four, and five hitters, George Brett, Willie Mays Akins, and Daryl Porter. Walk has already turned in seven strong innings. He has done all that Green has asked. Six more outs, he'll have gone one step beyond. And Green will be able to come back with Steve Carlton tomorrow as they start the eighth. That is not a pleasant thought for the Kansas City Royals, Joe. Okay, Brian, we've got a new left fielder for the Philadelphia Phillies. Greg Gross has gone into play for Philadelphia. Fastball is high. It's high. Two balls, no strikes. Seven four, Philadelphia leading eighth and eight. George Brett, zero for three. There's the strike. Two and two. George Brett, who just captured all America as he's chased four hundred. Here's the pitch again, a good fastball. We gave him a good steady diet of hard stuff, Joe. All three times up hard stuff in that pitch a sailing fastball away George looks like he thought it was a ball but walk is thrown extremely well he lines one in the left center field that's a base hit it'll be extra bases for Brett all the way to the wall he's digging hard he stops at second he's got himself a double they went to an off speed pitch Tom didn't they you know Tony as you're just talking about exactly what we were talking about he's been very successful with Brett all night popped him out to third base struck him out there's Tug McGraw on the Philly bullpen and I know that Dallas Green doesn't want to see that unless it says a ball game for it. popped him up to center field on hard stuff hard stuff hard stuff got him two strikes but an outstanding hitter threw a high change up to him when he's been successful with his hard stuff getting him out. Herm Charette is coming out now. Why would he do it? Why wouldn't he shake him off? Is it because he's a rookie or? I got to wonder this, Joe. Is it the theory that we heard Billy Martin talk about during the championship series? Oakland was more successful than any team in the American League against Brett, and they continually changed their patterns. They didn't stay one way. Starrett out there having a meeting with Young Walk. Let's pause briefly for our station identification. This is the NBC television network. A behind the scenes look at the Phillies and Royals after the game on KNBC Los Angeles. So George Brett is on at second base. It's a seven to four ball game. Philadelphia is out in front. Willie Mays Aikens is the batter. Tuck McGraw continues to throw. And they were hoping that they would just let him kind of rest out there, but now they got a chance to win a ball game and they're going to pull some stops. And McGraw is one of them. Fastball outside, ball one. Well, Tuck's the guy that was too tired. In fact, he didn't want to pitch in game number five unless he had to, and he had to. It's an all five of the championship series. That ball gets away from Boone. Almost into the dugout, but Brett moves on over to third. All right, Tom, could that be a sign of tire? Tried to overthrow, looked like a breaking ball, or was it a fastball? I couldn't really tell on that, and from this replay, we can't tell, Tony, but down that part of the plate, it's either a slider, obviously, or a fastball. Can't wait to. Here's another good shot, our center fielder shot. Center field shot, fastball right down yep. the dirt. Could, could be that he's trying to overthrow a little bit here, or it could be a sign of fatigue. Obviously, that's what Hermster Red was talking about, Boone about. Deep to right field. McBride is going back. This ball may be out of here. Home run, Willie Mays Aikens. His second. 
second home run of the ball game. And if he's not tired, he's going to be tired after that shot. Willie Mays anchors really into a trot just now getting to second base. It's a seven to, seven to five ball game. Seven six. Willie Mays Aikens and he put a little silencer on his crowd. Here's the swing. We talked about it earlier in the broadcast about it hitting behind George Brett still getting 98 RBIs another fastball home run earlier that he hit was a fastball that was a fastball inside half the plate spun on it very well and hit it extremely well there's Dallas Green going back to the mound and Bob Walk I think has had enough good shot of Willie Mays Aikens in the Royals dugout. I'll tell you, he's going for records as far as watching the home runs. We've seen Reggie Jackson do it in the fall so very often when he knows it's gone, and Aikens is coming close to Reg. And we're going to have a break in the action. A nice hand for Bob Walk. The score here is 7 to 6. Philadelphia out in front. Nobody out. We'll be right back after these messages. Look at yourself sitting there watching other people play games while your once hard body grows softer and another weekend goes down the tube. We say, come on, stop spectating and get in the game. We're AMF. We make what it takes to renovate the body and raise the spirit. We make quality products. Voight Balls, Ben Hogan Golf Equipment, Harley Davidson Motorcycles, AMF. We make weekends. You take a thousand hearts up here with you. Make them skip a beat. Then take them back down to Miller time. Time for the best tasting beer you can find. America's quality beer. When it's time to relax. Miller High Life. One beer stands clear. If you've got time, we've got the beer. Reaching your financial goal is never as simple as some people would have you believe. You have to know exactly where you're going and make the right decisions at the right time. At Merrill Lynch, it's our skill at guiding you through the intricacies of investing that makes us what we are. Merrill Lynch, a breed apart. On NBC Sports World, see the Michael Spinks Yaki Lopez Slugfest, the world's top bowlers in the legends of bowling, plus a World Series update Saturday. There's a beautiful shot of Veterans Stadium, 65,791, and right now it's a one-run ball game, seven to six. Young Bob Walk, who is going to give Dallas Green and the Philadelphia Phillies a breather, was all for seven innings, but here in the eighth inning, a double by George Brett, a wild pitch and a home run. Bob Walk heads for the clubhouse, but he did give the Phillies seven tough innings. Tug McGraw loosening up, and Thursday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time, it's games people play. Cannonball, a world cannonball championship. Those are not just ordinary cannonball championships. <laughs> That's the world. <laughs> and soupy sales and custard pie throwing. He picks his pies to throw. You see that? Skateboard fever strikes. Hottest thing on four wheels and more. That's Thursday on games people play. And sir, the world, uh, that's what I want. The world cannonball. Yeah, do the whole thing again. I liked it so much. <laughs> Joe Garciola with Tony Kupak, Tom Seaver, Paul Moscow, Brian Gumbel, Ron Luciano, Merrill Harmon. We got more broadcasters than the Yankees got coaches, but we got quite a ball game. Seven runs, ten hits, and no errors for the Phillies. Six runs, eight hits, and one error for Kansas City. There are nobody out, nobody on, and the batter is Daryl Porter. A one-run ball game, Tug McGraw in relief. A one-run game. Pass ball is inside, ball one. You'll not see too often a manager in the first game of the World Series go along as long as he did with Bob Walk, give up six runs. And this is the man they wanted to save Tom if they could. Well, this is the guy that really bought him the pennant, I'll tell you, Tom McGraw. Got a fastball, curveball, slider, change up, screw ball, and he can throw him anyone at any time. Has tremendous command of every one of his pitches and a real battle. High fly ball, left field. 
Gross makes the play. One out. Tom, we saw McGraw late in the season up in Montreal, and he got up there and struck out five of six, and he did a lot of it with his fastball. I mean, they started looking for the screwball, I think, a little bit. Started looking for the off-speed stuff, and he just was blowing the ball by guys. He can fool you, little guy. I, you know, I was reading the press, the press guide up here in my room last night. It has Tug at six feet, 184 pounds. I'm going to have a little discussion with Tug about that tomorrow. Now, he's not six feet. Tugger and I played together for about, I don't know, five or six years in New York, world champion team in 1969. And I bet you I get a half-hour dissertation about how he is six feet tomorrow, too. Tug is a... An effervescent personality. He'll, he'll talk about anything. He's got a line for everything. He's got a name for every one of his pitches. Calls one of his fastballs a, a Peggy Lee fastball. <laughs> is that all there is? He's a, a real character and a real personality on that ball. A great sense of humor. One strike to count. Got a pinch hitter coming out in the on deck circle. doesn't get it in a strike two. There he is John Wathen coming in to bat against McGraw. He'll be batting for Hurdle. I've heard uh, hitters talk about batting against McGraw a little bit this season. They say his screwball is not moving as much but the change of speeds is fooling guys more. And it happened to Mike Quayer with Baltimore the last couple of years. He lost his screwball but the hitters continued to look for it and he got about with fastballs and sliders. Sometimes hitters get something imprinted on their mind. They can't shake it. Otis fouls it off. He had a good cut. Cut remains a strike two. It's a one run ball game and should the Phillies lose this game it's going to really be a real stinger not only because they lost it but they used a man they did not want to use. I wouldn't bet against McGraw even though he might be a little tired. I'm not saying that I'm just saying that if you win you're not going to be tired but if you lose you might be a little more tired the next day because he lost. It's, defeats have a way of really making you tired. Hypothetically, Joe Wright, if they lose. But I think one thing that Dallas Green has in the back of his mind, he's got his big boy, his big left-hander going out there for him tomorrow. And he's, he knows almost for certain he's going to get eight or maybe even nine good innings out of Steve Carlton, who has been his, you know, he's been his workhorse all year long. 24-game winner. 24-9. One ball and two strikes. Now the count on Otis. McGraw appeared in five playoff games. One save. 4.50 earned run average. Pitched eight innings. He was coming in. Two and two the count. Otis. Low. Three and two. Seven and six is the score. Philadelphia's out in front. We're in the eighth. One man out. Two runs are in. A home run by Willie Mays Akins. His second of the night. He has driven in four runs. He's had a big night. Otis had a two run homer. Kansas City, all their runs scoring on home runs. This is a hitter situation, obviously, Joe. A three and two count. But as you can see, Bob Boo behind it played, called for a fastball, tucked, shook it off. And now he wants to throw the screwball, even three and two. And he's lined to left field. That's a base hit. The tying run is on. Otis has three base hits. Two run homer in the second, a single in the third, and now a single here in the eighth. I was surprised to hear you say that. Here we look at it from our left center field camera, the base hit. Do you consider a three and two situation a hitter situation, or do you have for, the edge? For most, for most pitchers, it's a hitter situation. Not for most, you though, huh? Not for you though, Ken. <laughs> you talking about me first? Yeah, that's what well, I'm talking I'm about. I'm talking about for most. I'm not talking about for Tug because in the three-two situation, this that was a situation where Amos Otis couldn't sit on one pitch because Tug's had four pitches he can throw. No question about it. But for the majority of pitchers, you get to a three-two situation, you got a pretty good chance of knowing what the pitch is coming. Otis can run. Tying run. Bouncing ball. Boa has it. One out. Double play. Manny Trio, strong arm, made that play. What a pivot, Tony. He is so quick and so strong. He generates more arm speed very quickly. A breaking ball down that Watson pounds in the turf. 
Moab bare hands. It shows the ball. And look at that flip from down under Lowbridge, the runner, and he had a lot of the throw. We saw that in the championship series game on a relay. So we go into the bottom half of the eighth inning. Look at this flip. A lot on it. The score, Philadelphia 7, Kansas City 6. RCA wants you to see the right color. Color track. Does your television automatically capture all these subtle shades of green in this flowing stream of color? Color Track 1981 can. With RCA's exclusive detail processes, Color Track separates detail from color, refines it, then locks the right color on track. Even colors only subtle shades apart. Color Track 1981. RCA is making television better and better. I told my Allstate agent I can't afford life insurance. Well, John, don't put marbles in the penny wrappers. He told us about one of Allstate's affordable life plans. For a 28-year-old, $50,000 in decreasing term insurance for about $11 a month. These pennies could pay for a couple of months. Well, John... Well, you put your pennies in my marble jar. Ask about Allstate Life's affordable life plans. You're in good hands with Allstate. Remember this, a Rhine wine by any other name is not the same. Next time you wonder what white wine to drink, think of Gallo Rhine. Our high shot from the blimp as we go into the bottom half of the eighth inning. 65,791, Manny Trio doesn't get a strike one. Joe, as we watch this series progress, I think it's important for our fans to realize, and with Trio up, I think it's important, that the four guys in the middle of the diamond on both teams, Washington, White, Trio, finish after this. High fly ball, Watham, who stays in the ball game, hauls it in, there's one away. Trio, and I'll add Boa of the Phillies, are not just out there because they're good defensive players. They can give you the speed on the base pass to steal a base, some extra base punch as White showed with a home run in the championship series against the Yankees. So they're run producers to a degree, too. Not just defensive men. Boa got it going. He and Pete Rose, the catalyst in that big five-run inning. Boa with a base hit, stole a base. He takes it high, ball one. Kansas City jumped out to a two-run lead in the second, a two-run homer by Otis, a two-run homer by Aikens. It was 4 nothing. Boa pulls it foul on the first baseline. Now, when Boa, st Boa stole that base is the thing to me that really stands out, Joe. Down by four to Leonard, and he shook him up. Stole the base, and then Pete Rose was hit by a pitch. Smith had a base hit. It was a walk and a home run by McBride, a three-run homer. He scored five. One in the fourth, one in the fifth. Frank White has it. Easy out, two away. Here is Bob Boone. Boone doubled and drove in a run, later scored in the third. He doubled a drive in another run in the fourth, and he bounced out. Second to first in the sixth. Bob Boone, two for three. I'll tell you, he's played hurt a lot. Not complain. He's just gone out there, as they say, and loaded the wagon. Curveball is high. Ball one. I think aside from the uh, injuries that he had, the severe strain on guys like Boone and Tom and everybody else who play representative during the work problems, baseball this year, it had to be a tremendous strain on his mind, Tom, trying to play through that. Well, he's very active. All the in meetings. That. Very oh. active in that, Tony, yes. League representative, and, isn't he? And really digs into it, yes. He's been represents the National League extremely well. Like he Very well versed on it, no question about it, and, and does a, a tremendous job for all the players in that situation. See, he and Sal Bando will represent the players, and Frank Cash and Harry Dalton, ownership, along with Marvin Miller, Ray Greeby, when they start talking once again, they've had a couple of meetings on free agency and what's going to happen. Two balls and one strike, two outs. Bob Boone, 7-6, Philadelphia in front. 
Here's the strike on the outside corner. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody on. Boone, a foul ball. Just barely foul. The first base umpire, Bill Kunkel, raised his hands. There you see him. Very quietly, Renny Martin. He's been in this is the second World Series, Bill Kunkel, former uh, American League pitcher, Yankees, Kansas City. But Renny Martin very quietly has just kind of held his team in this ball game, Tom. Came in and didn't really do a terrific job, was getting behind people, et cetera. But it seems, you know, the more time he's been in here, the calmer he's gotten, the more he's gotten his feet on the on the ground, the same way they walked it, no question about it. Two balls and two strikes with two outs. Hot smash in the right field. And Bob Boone is on. That's his third base hit of the night. He was really limping down to first base. On that ankle we've talked about, and now two outs he's on. And look at Booney. He's at two balls down in that area. Jimmy Fry is coming out as we're showing this replay to you. There's the new right fielder. We told you that earlier. Walton pinch it, stayed in the game. He's going to make a pitching change. Marty Patton has been throwing for Kansas City. So we're going to have a break in the action, and we'll be right back after these messages. You're the Pepsi generation, spirit of today. And with every taste of life that's new, well, that Pepsi spirit shines right through. about to see Ford pickups make six-cylinder EPA fuel economy history. For 1981, Ford breaks this mileage barrier with the best estimated MPG ever achieved by a six-cylinder pickup. And here's another breakthrough, the first and only automatic overdrive option in any eight-cylinder truck. When your speed reaches about 40, it automatically shifts into overdrive and your engine runs slower. Only Ford has V8 automatic overdrive. For 1981, Ford pickups make one breakthrough after another. They're built Ford Tough. Charlotte, will you marry me? But her last chance at happiness explodes when Clemma returns. I'm going to marry her, Charlotte. Lynn Redgrave stars in Centennial Saturday. Well, a new picture as we see a shot from down the right field corner is Dan Quisenberry. And Tom, this is, <laughs> I tell you, you talk about somebody having a year. He's really had a year. Well, he had the kind of year that people dream about, Joe, no question about it. Quisenberry, 6'2", 180, just 26 years old. 12 and 7 this year with a 3.09 ERA, 33 saves. 128 innings pitch and gave up 129 hits. And tremendous ability to come in, throw that ground ball, get the double play. They say he's just been absolutely phenomenal for the Royals this year. He doesn't walk many, nor does he strike out many. You see his delivery. In fact, this year he dropped down a little bit lower, and that is part of the instruction of Kent to Colby, the fine pirate reliever. He's also come up with a pretty good fork ball. You mentioned Goose Gossage a moment ago. The 33 saves that Quisenberry has tied him with Gossage for most of the American League. Greg Rose will be batting against Quisenberry. Two men out. Eighth inning, 7 6, Philadelphia leading. Boone is on at first base. This is strike. Eldon Ocker threw like that. Frank Laga. Remember that as we look at Bob Boone. He's Abernathy. He's not down as low. Do you think it's Abernathy and Dick Hyde and some of those guys? Do you think he's, he's pretty low? He sure is. He's come pretty low. Going to be a tough play. UL's only play to first base. It is in time. They get him. Beautiful play by. UL Washington, who has really been some shortstop. So that ends the inning at the end of eight innings. As we look at Tug McGraw, the score here, 
Philadelphia 7, Kansas City 6. And due up in the ninth inning for Kansas City, Frank White, UL Washington, and Willie Wilson. One, two, three, four, five. Trouble spots like these are what separate Gillette Atro from all ordinary razors. The reason? The Atro pivot. It keeps the blades at a perfect shaving angle, giving you a better shave than any razor that can't pivot. One, two, three, four, five. How many more reasons do you need? Gillette Atro, the pivot makes it better. Gillette, when it comes to shaving, we give you the edge. Bring the world closer with a camera that lets you get closer than any other. Can I take your picture? Polaroid's SX-70 Sonar. SX-70 Sonar. You'll share the moment once again. Could you picture yourself with any other instant camera? This ranch doesn't run without horses. And the horses don't run without you. But when you've hammered out a day's work, you meet up with Miller time. When it's time to relax. Time for the best tasting beer you can find. One beer stands clear. Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Behind UL Wash, behind Dan Quisenberry, UL Washington goes deep in the hole at short and guns the ball over to first. Gets Greg Gross to keep the Royals only one down as they turn into the ninth with Frank White, UL Washington, and Willie Wilson do up. And Joe and Tony, you talk about a long wait. If the Phillies can get three more outs, it'll be their first World Series win in 65 years. Mm. Long time. Jim Fry, he's got to get the lumber going and get some runs, but. You know, talking to Ken Harrelson once, he said baseball is the only sport that when you're on offense, the other team controls the ball. And that's quite a thought. The Royals are on offense. They need a run, but the Phillies control the ball, and that's the battle we have here. Seven to six, top of the ninth. Frank White, who is one for three, leads it off. Fouls it back. Well, due to the length of tonight's game, local news and a Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson will be seen after the game on the West Coast and most mountain time zone stations. These programs will be seen at their regular time. Schmidt just behind the bag and he's creeping in because White was speed can butt. Rose has got to be alert also. Both corners protected down the line. This one run ball game on the third and first base. Popped up out of play. And McGraw with a screwball is quickly ahead. A two strike count. Now well, they've posted on one of the scoreboards here in Veteran Stadium. Tomorrow's pitchers. Game two. Gura versus Lefty. That's all they say around here in the town. When they say Lefty, the people in Philadelphia know exactly who it is. Steve Carl. Mike Schmidt, big hop, long throw. One out. The Phillies are 41 and 41 at home. A little trickier to look because he was up close and the ball hit the dirt, almost handcuffed him. That's the only time you get a bad hop on this surface. Well, you might hit a seam in the turf, but from turf to dirt, here it is again. Good example, Tony, of what you talk about in this situation, guarding the line, preventing the double. You know, if Mike is over in regular position, that might be a very difficult play for him. Especially with white speed. Here's UL Washington batting right handed against McGraw. This crowd, they want two more outs. Dallas Green started a youngster. Walk, trying to buy some time. He's two outs away from making some buy. Screwball misses, ball one. Royals with three home runs, all two run homers. Two by Willie Mays Akins. One by Amos Otis. Take McBride, a three run homer, a five run third inning, a big one. Outside, 2 and 0. Doug McGraw. Oh 
Seven six. Philadelphia leading. One out in the ninth. You are watching. Excuse me, Joe. You are watching with a little more punch right handed. That's his natural side. Out of play. Two Talk, balls, one strike. Tug McGraw, Joe, using every pitch that he has in his book. I mean, he has the confidence to throw any one of those pitches. 20 saves this year for the Phillies. Has 164 saves lifetime. You now watch them five home runs from the right side, one from the left side this year. Stuff, didn't exactly a point you made earlier, Tony. Showing so many pitches, showing the curveball, showing the slider, showing the screwball. They can't sit in any one pitch, and all of a sudden, Tuggy pops that fastball right to the middle of the plate. And there's no question he's looking for, for an off speed pitch, a breaking pitch, something other than the fastball. Gary Maddox has just moved way over to right center field now. Two balls, two strikes. Listen to the crowd, they'll tell you. That's a great shot from the center field camera. You can see Booney giving the signal. Hear the pitch again. A screwball. You saw Booney wiggle the fingers for the off speed screwball pitch. The bat didn't go. Good call by Harry Wendelstead. Good movement on that one. Excellent movement on that pitch. Now the count three and two. What are you going to throw? What's the hitter going to look for? You can see Booney fastball. It's going to be a fastball. The screwball that got Washington out on his front foot, and then he runs a count to three and two, throws a fastball right by him. Tuck McGraw, the guy that's been the entire Philadelphia bullpen, coming out in the late innings down the last half of the season. Willie Wilson, he's 0 for 4. This crowd on its feet. You'll hear the reaction on every pitch. Oh. Mike Schmidt guarding the line, but he's moved in a step or two. Drifting back. One and one to count. Ninth inning, two men out, nobody on. Philadelphia seven, Kansas City six. Two strikes. You see the very calm Tug McGraw here, Joe, and you know him as well as I do. If he strikes Willie Wilson out, gets his last out, that's a very calm Tug McGraw. But underneath that, if he can get the third out, watch him. He'll be as wild as the people in the stands. The stands standing up. Listen to the crowd. They'll umpire. They'll broadcast it for you. To buy him inside. The outfield has moved a little bit deeper now to Wilson with his speed, and he can turn a single or a double in the inside the park home run. We've seen him do it twice last year. Got to protect those alleys. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Top of the ninth, Philadelphia leading 7 6. Tug McGraw against Willie Wilson.
So the first game is now history. The Philadelphia Phillies, after giving a four-run lead to the Kansas City Royals, Phillies win it 7-6. Home runs by Otis. Aikens had a pair. Big McBride had a big home run for the Phillies. But it's a 7-6 win. Philadelphia over Kansas City. The winner is Bob Walk. The loser is Dennis Leonard. Quite a ball game here. This crowd really reacting. A big win. There you see Tuck McGraw came in relief. Dallas Green bought time. And the Phillies beat Kansas City 7-6. Game one of the 1980 World Series has been brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer, who invites you to test drive the new 1981 Ford cars and trucks. And by the Miller Brewing Company, Brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. And by Allstate Insurance Companies, you're in good hands with Allstate. And by United Airlines, United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what Friendly Skies are all about. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Don Oldmeyer. The coordinating producer of baseball is Michael Weissman. The telecast of tonight's game has been produced by George Finkel. Directed by Harry Coyle. Pre-game produced by David Stern. Pre-game and replays directed by Ken Fouts. Technical director, Horace Ruiz. Associate producer, Michael Handley, Glenn Adamo, and Bill Peters. Associate directors, Richard Klein, John Filippelli. Production manager, Steve Foreman. Remember, tomorrow at 8 o'clock is game two of the World Series on NBC. Now stay tuned for late news, followed by the Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson over most of these NBC stations. On the West Coast, most mountain time zone stations, these programs will be seen at their regular time. Once again, final score, Philadelphia Phillies 7, Kansas City 6. Carlton against Gura tomorrow night here on NBC.